Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, and thank you for joining us once again, the Modern Chess of Gaming. I'm Kaiju K, and with me here is Necro Nick. What's up? The Subliminal. Yo! Really? Really? Just yo, and waving at them? All right, well, and of course, Redfield. Plants suck. Yeah, <laughs> salty still. Now, folks, uh, this is supposed to be a live stream event, but unfortunately, the internet decided to die literally 30 minutes before. Literally 30 minutes before. So, unfortunately, Necro doesn't have anything to worry about checking on the streams or anything, and this will probably come in clear clear as a bell, so I mean, why worry about that? So get your ass over here, boy. Well, he actually has his information written on his computer. Yeah. So, just for a disclaimer, just so I can get a lot of people pissed off with me all at once. What? Uh, uh, no barkies. I mean, actually, technically, I can't even use my information. But not, oh, yeah, you don't even have it set up. All right, then. It was all uh, on the internet. <laughs> naughty, naughty. Always have backups for backups for backups. You don't even have anything. Shut your mouth, boy. But I came in with the truth. Truth that you are a failure. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> the fact is, fuck Goku. There. I said it. All right. Fuck him. Over. Honestly. <laughs> He's got to be the worst character in DBZ. <laughs> I said it. And I have reasons why. But we're going to go into those in a completely different episode. But what you should know is, from from the beginning of Dragon Ball to the end of Dragon Ball, Goku was one of my favorite characters of all time. Was. What did that change the second Dragon Ball Z came in, though? Woo-wee! Did I learn what a kind of an asshole he was? And fuck his version of the Kamehameha while I'm at it. That being said, I want you to pay attention to the terminology of his Kamehameha. Because I'm going to be coming back to that later on. So this is our list of our favorite DBZ moves. Now, of course, list isn't just DBZ, but from Dragon Ball all the way up to Super, games included. Your favorite of all techniques, and why? Now, I'm going to start this one off by explaining why I don't enjoy the Kamehameha wave from Goku. First of all, it's a stolen technique. Yes. Goku is not the only member of the crew who can use the Kamehameha. Nope, several can. Let's see, Piccolo has used it before. Ten Chihan used it before. Krillin can use it. Yamcha can can use it, although he never uses it for some reason. He used it like one time. Yeah, Master Roshi can use it. He's the founder of it. <laughs> Yamcha can use it. That's a, that we already said Yamcha, yeah. but who cares? We'll also look at instant transmission. I know that's oh, yeah, a lot yeah, of people's yeah, favorites. Don't, don't forget about Cell. Cell, oh, Cell can... Wait, I'm gonna get to Cell in a second. <laughs> There's a difference there. Majin Buu can use it. Yeah, Majin Buu. Both forms of him. Oob, Oob can use it. Yep. So, I mean, it's not exactly... It, it, it's like a key blast. It's not like it's a regular thing. Now, however, there is one difference, though. And it's a move used by Cell himself. It's taught in the video games and in the manga itself. It even had Master Roshi in tears. It's Perfect Cell's perfect Kamehameha wave. Now, in the manga itself, when Master Roshi watched on TV as Cell used this, even he said he could not use the Kamehameha in that level of perfection. It was literally the perfect version. Faster, stronger, more powerful, larger range. It just dwarfed Goku's in every way, shape, and form. And Master Roshi said it himself. He can't even do it that well. Mm -hmm. But Master Roshi can do one thing that those two can't do. Master Roshi can start off a Kameha wave, stop it in mid-power, mid beat the ever-living tar out of somebody, and then just relaunch it. He can literally hold the Kamehameha in himself... Rather than have to hold his hands together, whoop the crap out of an army! Yep. And then go, you know what, screw it, bam! And just blow you away. Yep. Can Goku do that? No, no. Nah. This, this is what, these two are where I have problems. The original user's Kamehameha wave, or Cell's Kamehameha wave. Just gonna move the camera a little over here. Yeah. So, that's where I come, come up with the Kamehameha waves. Personally, since I've used it in every version of Budokai and every version of Xenoverse, I'm going to stick with Perfect Cell's Perfect Kamehameha Wave. Which one, which one are we talking about? The, the one that Goku dodged or the one that uh, that, cell, that Gohan def uh, deflected? The, the one that Goku dodged. Okay. Because by the time Goku or by the time Gohan deflected it, the cameras were already destroyed. Okay, it makes sense. All right, I yeah. wanted to make sure. Yeah, and, and the only reason that Gohan was able to stop himself from being killed by that attack is because Daddy showed up. But anyway... That's a personal belief of mine. We're going to move on to Redfield. What about you? What's one of your favorites? All right, we're going to go all the way back to the original Dragon Ball. The 20, I believe it's the 22nd Budokai. Okay. The one, the one with uh, Piccolo Jr. Okay, yeah, I think that was the 22nd. Uh, it was um, 
The fight was uh, Ten Shin Han versus Cyber Tao Pai Pai. Okay. And we get this whole spiel about uh, Tian not wanting to hurt, hurt Tao and just respectfully get him off the ring. And then Cyber Tao, Cyber Tao got pissed and he's like, you know what? I'm going to take my hand off. As after he uh, after Ten Shin Han was trying to force him out of the ring, this 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 lodged his hand and he, t and he told him told Ten Shin Han, you know, I gotta move. It's better than my original move in every way, and I promise you, it's gonna destroy you. I hope you're ready for it. You ready? It's my super dodompa, man. That thing, like, like the way he just hyped it up. Like for me, it's just the way he hyped it. Up. I was like, yo. This is much better than my original Dodompa, man. And you should know, I'm the one who taught you this. His Don Don Ray, in case you guys don't... Yeah, the, you know, the Doden Ray. Yeah, in case you guys don't want to go that far, but yeah. But, and like, uh, he's like, it's going to be so big, it's going to incinerate you. <laughs> and like, he brings his hand out, well, the, the, the friggin' barrel of a hand at yeah. this point. And he's like, <laughs> he's charging it up. You see, you see the lights coming out, out of every single... Uh, On the barrels. barrels. Until it starts focusing to one one certain area of focus, oh. and he's just like super da dum pa, and the frig is just came out one beam of light that's like incredibly crazy, and then you know Ten Shin Han is like I'm gonna do a karate yell, I'm gonna yell it away, ah, and it's gone, but just the whole <laughs> setup to it. It was like so hype. I was like, you but know. But is that an attack you would want to see yourself using? Oh, definitely. That, especially if oh, I he's already removing a hand, folks. He's already got a handicap. Yep. <laughs> oh, no, no. I see, see, if my hand is detachable like Cyber Tao was, I can always put it back on afterwards, so it doesn't really matter. It's kind of the same thing as like uh, Android 16 when he did when he removed both. No, 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 no. You, you cannot put that on the same level with oh. Android 16. Okay. Did. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, he used two hands. The, listen, Hellblaze is a hell of an attack. All right. I agree with that. But what I'm <laughs> walk towards the light. But what I'm saying is, is that the <laughs> hype coming up to that attack was so hype. That I feel like it just made it all worth it. Hey, you know what was another attack that brought a lot of hype up? The Spirit Bomb. Hell yeah, dude. One of the most useless techniques ever. Only killed one villain. And he's used it on how many? Was and it five? Hold yeah, on. it was five. Genus, Frieza, Majin Buu, uh, Jiren. That's, no, it's only four. Unless you want to talk about uh, movies, then yeah, it'd be yeah. five. Okay, if you're talking movies, yeah, it's yeah. five. But He's used it on five different opponents. It's worked once. Twice, actually. Who else did it kill? Uh, Super Android 13. He, although Goku absorbed the spirit bomb into himself. Yeah, that was, that was not the same technique. That was Super Dragon Fist. Okay, well, he <laughs> still absorbed the spirit no, bomb. No, in actually, absorbing the spirit bomb was actually another form of Super Saiyan. Oh, okay. The creators actually adm ad admitted it. Okay. That's Spirit Saiyan mode. Which is supposedly the mode that Gohan can go to, which is also known as Super Saiyan Mystic Mode. Huh. Which is just another way of saying, crap, we don't know what to say, <laughs> we don't know what to do, make up a name for it, quick! We're copying uh, freaking Power Rangers now. <laughs> quick, and, do something! It's like the same like bullshit that, he, that uh, took, uh, friggin' <laughs> that, that he put in with, with how a Super Saiyan is a Super Saiyan. The S-cells, man, it's all about the S-cells. <laughs> <laughs> and then a giant pink ball of gum beats the living piss out of all of you. Yep. Hey, Super Saiyan, so super. So super. Well, I still like to be able to turn things into <laughs> chocolate. Hey, that's a different technique, and we're not onto you just yet. Nick. So, uh, for my first ability or technique, it's gonna be actually Majin Buu's absorption technique. <laughs> oh, the one where he just rips off a piece of body and just. <laughs> <laughs> you mine. <laughs> oh, dear lord, the absorption technique. Yes. Oh, first off, amazing. Everything about Majin Buu is amazing. Oh, I love Majin Buu. Mm. Buu gonna eat you up! Buu gonna eat you up! <laughs> Buu turn you into candy now! <laughs> I make you chocolate! Or maybe cracker and cheese! <laughs> you look like donut to me! <laughs> Personally, one of my favorite arcs of the series. Oh, hell yeah! I love the Majin Buu series. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually watched part of that. Hmm? Oh, you actually can be part of the conversation. Wow. Oh. Kind of. Holy shit. The only thing I didn't like about the Majin Buu arc was this. We had Majin Buu. Yes. Big, fat, lovable, fluffy. I love everybody, but I want to eat. Yeah. Love them. Love them. Yep. Then you have Kid Buu, who's like the ultimate version of perverse evil. 
Yeah. He's this little midget, but he's so he, strong he, and everything he's, like he's that. He's evil incarnate. He's literal evil incarnate. Which is actually the only reason why the spirit bomb killed him. Yeah. But, but in between them, in between them was Super Boo. Uh, evil Boo first. Yeah. Sorry, well, evil Boo, Super Boo. The, the well, same concept. The same concept. Con wait, which one was the one that ripped the hole in the tying? That was, that was, that was full blown Kid Boo. No, no, that's Kid the whole, Boo. No, no, that's it, the whole. Was, it was after Majin Buu transformed into the skinny version of himself. Like, the real tall, skinny version. Yeah, that's Evil Boo, also known as... Well, oh, that's Evil Boo before he starts absorbing people. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, so... You know, we have puppy problems. Yeah, but the problem is, in between the two, I did not enjoy the two forms in between. Mm. We have Cell. I'll give you another example of a Transformer. We have Cell. Yep. Cell's first form, creepy as hell. Fuck okay, yeah. honestly, yeah. creepy yeah. insect stabs yeah. you, eats you. Gotta love Team Four Star for making him even creepier. Yeah. Talk about how I took an entire battle ball team at the same time. <laughs> is he pitching? No. Ew. <laughs> that is second form, which I, personally, in my personal belief, I thought was the coolest looking yeah. form. Oh, he yeah. was this big hulking behemoth. He still had the stabbing tail and everything like that. He was awesome. And like you, you could tell he wasn't quite complete. Like, he still like he still felt like old and mold and green. Right. It's right. Like, but not then, not the good green, but the bad. Green. But then he had perfect cell. And my God, is perfect cell so awesome looking? Oh, in my opinion, yes. yeah. he literally looks like he's wearing body armor and a helmet, yeah. and it's actually parts of him. It, it, it almost feels like <laughs> legit perfection. Like, right. But what Boo reminds me of? Boo kind of reminds me of how I felt with the whole Frieza transformation. Mm -hmm. You have Frieza, this short little mm -hmm. effeminate weirdo, yeah. then becomes this big horned demon-looking thing, yep. then literally becomes a xenomorph from freaking Ridley Scott. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, yes, 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 and then he shrinks. And becomes white. Yep. And not only does he become white, but he like he loses the accentuations, he doesn't have horns anymore. Yep. It's just like But just as pure like but, but I think like what what like gets a lot of people though about that final transformation is just the pure confidence he has, like I like the, when you first see him like with that final form. It's like he, he just he just knows that there's no one that can touch him. Well, and that, like, up, uh, spoiler alert, plot armor activated. But, like, <laughs> it's just like, he just knew. No one can touch him. It was, like, Piccolo, who was wrecking, wrecking him when Freeze the second form, and, yeah. you know, he wasn't going to do much in his third form. And, like, he just knew. Piccolo's not going to do shit against him. Nope, nope. Gohan, eh, he had his few moments to get second and third form. But not, definitely not going to fucking mess with final form Freeze. And then Krillin. Let's just skip over Krillin. Krillin's just Krillin. Let's Krillin's claim to fame is one technique which he borrowed and improved. Yep. One technique that doesn't do crap in the entire series other than cut tails off. Yeah. And yeah. the fact that he married Android 18. Hey, hey. That's the big advantage. Android okay? 18 is wife material. You can't deny that. Mm. Well, let's face facts. Remember, Vegeta married a rich woman. Krillin married a woman that beat the shit out of Vegeta. <laughs> Wife material. It, it's over. Wife, <laughs> wife material. That's like okay. going into a bar and saying, well, I slept with two women. Well, I slept with three. Yeah, well, I slept with a midget. <laughs> you, you gotta, Without a nose. Yeah, you gotta come back to that one and be like, uh, what do you mean? I guess my husband has no hair, no nose, and is the world's strongest human. And I banged a shite out of him. Yes. And I'll get back to those androids because I'm pissed at them too, but we'll get back to that later. <laughs> Sub, you want to throw a technique in? Uh, Instant transmission, obviously, because I'd want to be able to, you know, go places quickly. Probably right. visit the whole world. Well, remember, the only thing about instant transmission is you have to be able to focus on a person. That has energy. Yeah, so you'd have to know a person everywhere in the world to be able to focus on them. Do I have to know them, like, face to face? Yes, or? you actually be, have to be able to picture them. <sighs> Fine. Uh, we'll and, and another thing about that technique, every member of the Yadrab fam species has that technique. Yep. An entire planet has yeah. that technique. King Once Kai again, has that technique. And, and yeah, so fuck you again, Goku. What is it? Final, the final bang or something? Final what? flash? Are you talking about Big Bang or Final Flash? Or two different attacks? Uh, <laughs> final, final bang. I final think, bang. Or Final I Flare? It, I think it was uh, bang, Solid bang. Bang. The Big Bang attack? Yeah, yeah. there's also a Final Flare. Yeah. Just uh, because of the name. <laughs> he likes it because of the name. Yep. Just because okay. of the name. Now and I'm, how much destruction it could cause. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back in time a little too. I'm gonna go back in time to uh, the Dragon Ball arc, mm -hmm. where if I were gonna learn any technique from the entire Dragon Ball series, it's this one technique that only one villain ever had, and he designed it specifically for countering key attacks. All right, and that would be Shula's Demon Spiral Fist attack. 
Now, Shula was way back in the day. Oh, yeah. He was before King Piccolo, okay? Yep. He was a demon who created a technique where he could wrap his hand in a special energy that was basically anti-key. And when he struck, any key that he hit would just dissolve. So he could throw it at, at the at Kamehameha wave. He could throw it at the uh, the Big Bang attack. He could throw it. He could even throw it at the Spirit Bomb in theory. Yeah. It would go right through it, disintegrate. Just, it just shuts it off. And it still hits and explodes. <laughs> first first sense of Hakai energy. <laughs> what was that? As the first instance of Hakai energy. <laughs> oh, yeah. First, first instance of a godlike technique. Yep. Never used again. Nope. Never used again. He obviously forgot about it. <laughs> no character has ever thought about that. The only reason he lost the fight is because Goku... I think Goku finished him with a headbutt. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. I think it was a headbutt that he beat him with, like a flying headbutt or something. I want to remember that. But the thing about this technique is it has so much potential. Yep. It's an offensive technique. Yep. It's a defensive technique. And according to him, according to how he put it, he doesn't draw the energy from himself, but he draws the energy from the air around him. Which means he literally said it himself. He has an unlimited supply of this attack. Which means I could literally just keep launching this at attack after attack after attack. And the only thing that's stopping me is the person going into melee against me. Which, yep. even then, the, the other thing about Shula is once Goku started going into melee, he stopped using key attacks. Yeah. I mean, he's right point blank, and the attack is literally your fist. Yep. And it expands. I would just I would use that in melee too. Just punch you right to the ground. Honestly. All right, bring us back there, Redfield. Okay, uh, I guess another one. I'd ha another technique would I have to be is probably King Piccolo's like ultimate attack, where like he charged in his final battle with Goku, like he was charging it up in this one spot, and Goku couldn't do nothing about it, and like he would just ha he would just charge up like this, and then he would point his finger, and every time he pointed a finger, a frig an energy beam would come right at Goku. Oh, and oh just yeah, yeah, I can't. I, I think I think that's like, I think it's called God Slayer or something in the Japanese something, version. Yeah. Something like that. And yeah, like, it's just like, doof, 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 and it's like, son of a dodge, yeah, dodge, dodge. And, and then as soon as Goku, oh, as soon as, got, as, soon as uh, King Piccolo got Goku's other knee, and we all know how he got his first knee. Yeah. Friggin' cheap shot, bang! Ah, my knee. No such thing as cheap shots in a fight, brother. Oh yeah. <laughs> But uh, then, then he just charged up as high as he could and friggin' launched a death beam at Goku. <laughs> and the only reason he survived was because Ten Shin Han decided to fly. He decided not when Goku was getting chased around, but as soon as the big ball came in, he was like, I'm gonna help. <laughs> and, and that's when he... <laughs> yep. Alrighty. And then he tried doing it again, but this time Goku was like, nah, I got this this time. And then... We all know. We all know what happened after that. All right, there, uh, Krillin. I mean, sorry, Nick. Um, what's next on your list? Sensor beans. Sensor beans. He's now a monk. All right. So next up on my list is a move you only see once. Oh no! It is the goddamn motherfucking Kaioken. Well, you see it a couple times, but. He just stops using it for a while. Yep. I mean, like I have to. Ever. I have to agree with Nick. The Kaioken's technique is it literally increases your body's capabilities by folds. Yep. But it does horrible detrimental damage to your body afterwards. Well, yeah. Now the thing is that. That's would why. Be, would there be a way to counter that? Well, yes, in theory. You gotta outlast him. Well, well. If you can outlast him, you'll you'll. You'll be a -okay. In the story arc, I now the problem is I don't know if it's canon or not, canon or not. But there was a story arc where the villains were talking about, like they were all in hell and everything, and all the villains are talking about their fights and what they could have done differently. And everyone's just talking, and Cell's just like, "I just enjoyed the fight." Mm -hmm. And they're like, "What do you mean you just enjoyed the fight?" He goes, "All I wanted was a good fight." Yep. I, and he's like, "In fact, to be honest with you, I probably wouldn't have even destroyed the planet. I was just looking for a great fight." Yeah. Huh. And they're like, "What do you mean?" He goes. I copied all of Goku's techniques, including when he was fighting Vegeta. And they're like, yeah, he goes, I know the Kaioken technique. Yeah. Like, they're like, why didn't you use it? He goes, because it would have been unfair. And they're like, why is that? He goes, because I could keep using the Kaioken. Because my body regenerates any damage it takes. <sighs> the reason he didn't use the Kaioken was because it would be an unfair battle. And he wanted a fair battle. Right, he even said it himself. Like I said, though, I don't know if it's canon or not. That's the problem. I don't know if that, this arc is canon. But in the manga, he's like, yeah, but, you know, he's like, but you could have won. He goes, but then the fight wouldn't have been worth it. 
exactly. Which is why I still think Cell should have been in uh, Super instead of Frieza, but we're not going to get into that one. Mm. But yeah, the Kaioken... Oh yeah, uh, we we use it against Vegeta. Yep. Okay. Good. Good fight. Good fight. Um, we we use it against we use it against Fraser. Yes, we yeah. do. Yeah. Kaioken times twenty, yeah, pretty yeah, badass. We, uh, we used it. Wait, no. no, we didn't use it against Cell. No. Uh, no. 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 Of course. Or Majin. How about Majin Buu? Uh, yeah, no. 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 We didn't. No. 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 Um, did, How about anybody else after Frieza? Not, wait. Yes. yes, but not until Super. Yeah, basically. And not until way into Super. You well, we don't six. count that anymore. <laughs> yes, we do. It's kind of shut up. So I mean, like, the Kaioken is a great technique. Agreed. The problem is, oh, it des it destroys your body. Yes, it does. That's why it works well for, like, say, a Saiyan who, if you come on the verge of death, it makes you stronger. Right. Or being like Majin Buu or Cell, who would be able to just keep regenerating? It's just ridiculous. In fact, in theory, even Piccolo species probably could attend to it because they can regenerate, although yeah. not nearly as well as the others. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 which, this is always something that bothered me that Team uh, Four Star covered in their uh, adaptation of the Bridge series of Dragon Ball. Okay. We literally are fighting uh, and get Cell blown away. And then he regenerates, and he says, and then Piccolo even says, I don't think I could even do that. We'll so figure that out know, later. later. Exactly. That's because he's a bio-android. They, they yeah. explain that in the, in the actual oh, okay. anime. Yeah. It's because each one of his cells has all the memories of his body, so even a psychic couldn't stop him. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. So, like, as long as a single cell, which means, why wouldn't you just pop off a finger and throw it and then regrow one? You have a finger sitting there. You can come back. Yeah. Nope. nope. Um, That's too painful. How about you, Sub? You want to throw another one in there? Well, you just want to sit back there and what, laugh. What, what was the one that the martial artist guy uses? Uh, the oh, you're talking about the ki koho or the tri beam technique? Uh, mm. I believe it was the tri the one that was it's used. Tri beam. It's the same name. Little, it's the same technique. Tri beam. The very little one. The very first one. Used one. Barely used. I think he used it only like two, three times, and then that was it. He used it a few times in Dragon Ball. He couldn't quite pull it off in Dragon Ball Z. Because he didn't have time, you know. But he was able to use it against Cell. Which, oh, let me tell you. <laughs> and that's the and the one he used against Cell was the stronger version, or the Shin Ki ha, Ki Ko Ho. Or Neo Tri Beam. Exactly. Why don't we talk about the best character of all, Mr. Hercule? I'd rather not have to kill you on camera. <laughs> oh my god, the dynamite. He will dynamite, dynamite, dynamite kick you right in the face right now. Huh? Well, he, he is the fourth strongest human on the planet. All right. In theory, he is the fourth. Behind Krillin, Tien, uh, and uh, Master Roshi. I was only joking. Isn't guys. he the fifth? Actually. Hey, wait, what was Master Roshi's uh, hypnotism trick? Oh, the the uh, <laughs> when he faces uh, was it Gohan that Goku. he faced in the tournament? Goku. Goku. Oh, the the, uh, the the sleep the sleeping technique. I forgot what yeah, it's called though. It's like a hypnosis or yeah, something like that. That move I'd love to have. I guess that could be useful. I mean, he only used it twice, like in the entire series of Dragon Ball. So, like, it is, it is a very rare move that is very interesting. I'm seeing similarities between all these. They're well, hardly used. Well, Why well, fucking not? Well, here's another move that is hardly used in a technique that I would love to be taught. Yeah. It's only used on three occasions: mm -hmm. twice in a movie, yep. or sorry, once in a movie, once in Super, and once in Dragon Ball. Yeah. Used by Master Roshi, the Turtle Hermit himself. Oh my god! And the technique is the 100% body technique. Yes. What it does is it basically takes, how do I put it? He put it as it unlocks all the locks that are on your body and puts your body at the perfect condition. As it is a 100% boost, your body can never grow any stronger than what it is there. It literally says, hey, boom, I'm now at full strength. I am not holding back. Every cell in my body is on fire right now. It's like the Kaioken. Yep. Uh, how, let's see. I believe it was described as what Kaioken 2.5 would be. Sounds about right. So, but the problem is that the Kaioken destroys your body and the 100% body technique does not. Yep. It, it tires him out. It tires you out, yeah, but it does not destroy your body. Which, in my opinion, puts it above the Kaioken slightly. Until you get, until you get over to. But the question is, the question is, could you use that technique and then use the Kaioken? I think that would, like, utterly well, kill you. It, I mean, yeah, it'd probably destroy you. I, I think you think just... about it in theory. <laughs> but in theory... If you used the 100% first, you're already tired out, so... Oh, no, no, it doesn't tire out immediately. But if you're too tired to use the Kyle Ken already, if your body's too tired, 
you could also rupture, uh, ruin your body twice as much as before when. when well, you no, actually, uh, Master Roshi even mentioned there was no downside to the technique. You you don't lose anything. The well, problem if you is use that Kyle Ken after it though. Well, there's a there's the question. Does it double the damage to your body? It might. Uh, like I said, there's no no information or it could, on or it. Or I'll say you could even half it because, like I said, it's the perfect condition. Right, it perfect. So, so your body's already used to it. Right, so it could actually extend how long you could use a Kaioken. Hmm. That doesn't mean it can like kill you any less or any more. It's right. just that you could use it potentially longer. Because like it maxes out your stamina, it maxes out your endurance, it maxes out your defenses, it maxes out your attack. It's just one big super boost. And then double that and triple that and quadruple yeah. that. And he yeah. used it once against. Uh, Goku in his Uzuru form. Right. When he, when he blew up the moon. And then he used it once on... Oh, no, no he used it twice used in it twi Dragon Ball. Yeah. Because they also used it in combination with his max Kamehameha wave. I wonder yeah, to, to literally blow up fire. Yeah. And then he used it once in the Frieza... When Frieza came back in Super to yep. supercharge himself then. Yep. And he also used it once in the mo in the movie, the Brawly movie. Yeah, he used it in the Brawly movie too. But that was just for shits and giggles. Yeah, but still, I mean, he pumped himself up. And it was funny. But you never see it again. Broccoli, you're give it up. <laughs> and, and you know what? Another technique isn't that be really fucking useful. That's only been used like twice. Yeah. <laughs> How about the witch hand technique for Tien? Hey, I'm gonna spawn an extra pair of arms. Cause why the hey not? With with zero flaw. There's there's no flaw to it. It doesn't tire him out anymore. It doesn't weaken him. It doesn't drain any power. It hurts a little to use it. Yeah. But hey, you know when that would be really useful? When somebody lobs your motherfucking arm off. Yep. <laughs> like when Nappa ripped his arm off, he could have popped out an extra arm. Honestly. And that could have let him use the tri-beam properly. But, but why no! Think logically? Yeah, why well, think logically? You, you want to know what logic is? I'll tell you what logic is. Logic is a technique like... Uh, like uh, the the look into my eyes technique from General Blue from Dragon Ball. Yeah, yeah. He can look at you and paralyze you by looking into your eyes. Never used again. But that could solve all the world problems. Exactly. <laughs> and the thing is that Goku has copied so many different techniques. Mm -hmm. Why not copy that one? That, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes! That'd be well, the only well, technique. Was it, wasn't General Blue a, a cyborg, though? No, no, though. General Blue was a rig He was a blonde haired human. Okay, I thought he was a cyborg. No, That's no. how you sex. That was Colonel Black. Goku, oh, okay. Goku doesn't have a move. Well, yeah, Goku has no self taught move. Wonder, Every one of his moves is copied. I wonder what uh, the viewers would think about that theory of the 100% and the Kyle Ken usage. Well, if you guys want to put it down in the comments below, we'd be very thankful. Um, I'm actually curious, though. Why in the hell is the Red Ribbon Army so racist? What do you mean? They got plenty of people. Black. Colonel Black? No, uh, Colonel Black was a silver-haired man. What was the black guy then? I, I know I was th a... He was something purple. <laughs> I think he was something purple. He was like Lieutenant Purple or something like that. Yeah. General Purple? Maybe, maybe that was it. Maybe they were... Uh... And he was the most honorable fighter of the group. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they were uh, referencing uh, Reservoir Dogs or something. Maybe. Um... <laughs> You know, just to, just to throw it off to the side here, real quick, before we move on to the next technique, which will be yours. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I've always been big on in the Dragon Ball series are attacks that come out of unexpected locations. I like eye attacks, like uh, Piccolo's eye beam or the Demon Flash, which he used against uh, Free uh, Frieza to blind him temporarily. Yeah. I enjoy the mouth beams, like Piccolo's belch of flames or even Raccoon's super eraser gun. Yep. I freaking love the name. I just don't like how long it takes to use. And, and the fact that he just got punched into oblivion at, like, right as he's about to do it. Yep, yep. Got freaking knee in the jaw and blew his teeth out. Yep. Um, uh, Brawly's uh, chest firing eraser yes. cannon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could you imagine, like, squaring off against somebody and getting to the hole and just like, <gasps> BAM! And just pull yeah. them away with it. They yep. wouldn't expect it. Yep. Not like, to mention that. Ah! <laughs> Brawley's Eraser Cannon is actually one of my favorite techniques of yep. all time. Yep. Simply because not only is it a big, powerful boom boom weapon yep. that he can fire really rapidly, but it's homing. Yeah. I mean, it's got everything, and it can come out of your nipples, basically. I mean, nipple guns, yeah. fire, bah! He's got some legendary nipples, too. Oh, you yes, can't deny that. Those things could shatter things. Damn. And then, uh, I believe, I want to say it's Garlic Jr., who's the, the last one I would bring up. Who uh, I think he uses something called the Death Ripple, or I, I think, I might not even have it written down here. I was going to just. Like, it's like the death ripple or the death tag. But anyways, he shoots a, a wave of black energy. But he can shoot it from his belly. 
I mean, give me all of those. I can fight you. I was just like, I'll, 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 I'll spit a fire technique at you. I'll blind you, and I'll hit you with a belly drum and a chest burster. Ah! <laughs> well, well, dead. Ah! <laughs> Give me Piccolo's finger lasers while I'm at it. Ah, everywhere! Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you can't defeat me! Blah. Oh my god. Just, just out of nowhere, just all these beats. Ah, nah, 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 like a gun. Yup. Yeah. Oh. Just be laying on the ground. I'm out of energy! Help! Please stop! Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Please, sir. Can I have some? Blah, just burn them all! Help me! What's another technique you like, bro? The body change technique. Oh, please. That oh is such God. a potential horrid move. I hate that I move. I know, but just the fact that you could just... Switch bodies. Switch bodies with anyone that you want to. But what? there's a flaw to that. Even, but that's a flaw that could be corrected over time. What? It's kind of like the same... Because Ginyu's... Captain Ginyu's whole thing is changing bodies. Well, the question you got to ask is, what was Captain Ginyu originally? That's, yeah. Because that, that form that he's in, they, that, that, that was it, stolen. Yeah, it's, and that's a good question. Who the, knows? The, Maybe, the purple form was stolen, I know that much, because it was in his backstory that he stole... That was one of the first bodies he stole. One of the first! Yeah. Not the first! So what did he have? It's probably a second. So he could steal it back I bet something? you he was like a, like a cloud. What if he was like a living cloud, and he just like went into people? Nope, but, he was the frog he changed to. But the technique I hate about it is that he never uses it properly. Yeah. How long has he been with Frieza? How many times has he stood there next to Frieza where he could have been like, change now, and just transformed into him? Well, here's the thing, though. And just Gin turned around with Frieza's power and just iced himself. Well, here's the thing. Uh, Frieza, go, uh, Ginyu was utterly loyal to Frieza. Like, his loyalty to him knew no bounds. Well, I realize that, and but, like, I mean, like, in, yeah, in a form if, of power, if, I mean... If the option was there, he would definitely do it. But the fact that he was utterly loyal to Frieza, there was no question in his mind that he would not do that. He would definitely not do that to Frieza. He would do it to someone else as long as it wasn't Frieza or Ginyu's men. So why not take over one of the bodies that Frieza would have decided to kill instead of... There's also, the, there's also the, the, the theory of the fact that Frieza hates his brother and Ginyu was always around K Cooler all the time. So Cooler could have been another target. Yeah. Well, I mean, but once again, not it, canon though, so it doesn't matter. Well, it just depends on how you look at it. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't... GT isn't canon. Nothing in GT is canon. I love the GT I series. I do. I love GT, too. <laughs> it's considered a side story. It's not considered, like, non-canon in general. It's, it's, it's just a side story of another timeline, uh, however bullshit they want to put it out as, but... I mean, if, if you follow GT logic, then Mr. Popo is a lot stronger than he looks. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, he, lo he was literally able to take on Goten and Trunks as Super Saiyans... And like he was sweating a little bit, but that's just because he was scared. He's like, "What the? What is going on? Oh my you know, goodness!" Yeah, you know, Mr. Popo's um, Popo is like a fucking god. He is. He's an immortal genie. Yeah, and he has that some. He's biologically immortal. I also like the fact that he can literally eat key attacks. Just, just. Yep. Speaking of people Popo. that are fucking immortal. Uh oh. And he's a bird caller too. You can't forget that. Okay, Mr. Sensu Bean that brings the Sensu Bean what? and runs away from every Yajirobe! Ah, oh, I love his sword. He runs! Well, he never learned how to fly. From every attack, even though he's... Well, it still hurts. Just, be, just because he's force-fed himself Sensu Beans and the Mystic Life Water until the fact that he's basically immortal... Doesn't mean the fact that you kick him in the nuts, it's still gonna hurt! So the Yajirobe is, uh, sorry, Mr. Satan is the fifth strongest, because Yajirobe is the fourth. No, actually, Yajirobe is actually weaker than him, technically. Is he? Yeah, Mr. Satan's actually quite powerful. If you think about it, I mean, Mr. Yeah, Satan, the, the thing is, Mr. Satan took a hit from Cell that knocked him well over half a mile into a mountain, and then he yeah. fell down the mountain, yeah. stood back up, brushed himself off, and walked back over. I mean, yeah, Vegeta kicked him once and knocked him into a wall, and yeah, Jirobe was down. M Mr. Sa I know a lot of people laugh at Mr. Satan, but in his first oh, martial arts okay. tournament, he won legally. Yeah. I mean, he and had to be that strong to win legally. And, he, and he, who did he fight against? He fought against that one guy who turned into a Majin, right? Yeah. Uh, he was the, the, the bigger guy. Mm -hmm. I forgot his name, though. It was uh, Spopovich. Right. In the, first, in the first tournament that he was in, not everyone else that he cheated in, but the very first one... He won. Yeah. He in fact not only did he win, he won hands down. Yeah, he was dodging and everything. Which means that if you look at it that way, he's faster, stronger, and more resilient than Yajirobe. That's the only what reason happened? why Yajirobe's below him. What? Yeah. Then what happened? 
after he won, he let success get to his head. And he was afraid that if he lost uh, any more tournaments, he'd lose the money and his daughter would be homeless. Yeah. Because oh. he was spending money like this. Yeah. So that's when he started cheating in all the matches. Speaking of being homeless, and, 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 my, and the Majin Buu my favorite jokes from Team Four Star. I'm as confused as a homeless man on house arrest. <laughs> how do you know that? How does that make you? How does that make any sense? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so why? Uh. <laughs> so who's next? I think it's me. Name a technique, brother. Alrighty, it's uh when you the steel Kai uh, ability. Forget like when you could steal the energy off. You mean people. steel key? Yeah, key. Yeah. Okay, well, sorry. which which version are you talking about? Are you talking Mr. Popo's version? Or are you talking Android 18 and 19's version? 18 and 19. Or sorry, uh, 1920. Well, 1920. Are you talking about Super 17's version of it? Are you talking about Majin Buu's version of Even it? Even though 17. babies. <laughs> I mean, 17's 18. version actually didn't really absorb energy. Actually, he, Super 17. Yeah, yeah, Super 17. It, like he only did it really to protect himself from hurting him. Like, but while like nineteen and twenty were actively trying to steal, well, well no, energy. when Super Seventeen used his barrier, he also absorbed the energy into his body. Yeah, but the whole reason for it was to not get hit by it. Well, yeah, but it's still an absorption technique. Yes. That's what he's talking I about. Know, I, so, I mean, I'm which giving, one of these? I'm, I'm just giving you the difference. How about a mixture of two? Nineteen and twenty. Like nineteen and twenty. I always like theirs too. The hand thing. Yeah, the hand probes. I mean, as long as you are, as long as you're not, you know, stupid enough to just only use that. Because yep. <laughs> then somebody's just gonna rip your bloody arm off. Basically nineteen. <laughs> but to talk about that. It brings me up to the one thing that I'm going to bring up about the androids that I always hated. Mm-hmm. Besides that they besides they put the best android, in my personal opinion, in a movie rather than real. Um, android 13? Look at my trucker hat! <laughs> no, the, the thing I hated was... Okay, so, in the android arc slash regular cell arc slash purpose cell arc slash Majin Buu arc, yeah. the androids are literally... There as basically background. They're yeah. there for a purpose. Yep. However, in Super, it's when Seventeen finally tells Goku that the entire time, they were just holding back. They have yep. unlimited energy. Yep. It doesn't make any sense! You're in a life or death situation against some guy trying to absorb you. You have unlimited energy, unlimited power, the strength to go one-on-one against a Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Goku, and you I, let yourself get absorbed. And they've never explained why. I think what I think what what happened was is like they have a limited energy to put out, but they don't they, they don't have like in terms of power. I don't think they have like unlimited energy. They have a capper to how fat how far they can go with it. Well, but this force field can deflect not only attacks but people's bodies. Yeah. So when the when cells started absorbing them, he could have just used the force field to literally split cells tail open. <sighs> I think maybe they just. In fact, in fact, what I think it is is I think it was just an excuse to bring 17 and 18 back yeah. together in a story arc. Yeah, no doubt. No. Because the thing is, okay, unlimited power, the ability to absorb energy. And according to Xenoverse and Xenoverse 2, uh, Androids 18 and 17 also have the ability to do it through their skin as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure if that's canon or not, but in Xenoverse they explain that they can just use touch to absorb rather than the balls. Interesting. The balls can do it more <gasps> efficiently. Yeah. But they can just punch and absorb key. Nice. But I throw the ball to throw them off. If they miss that, they could just punch them. Well, the ball has to be part of you. <laughs> oh. um, the thing I mean, is, it's, like, it's a little probe in your hand. That oh, okay, that ball. Yeah. But I take that and about. unlimited energy, and you're just you're just done. You, you, what's gonna? What are you afraid of? How do you how do you lose at that point? And once again, it's something that was never explained. Maybe they why they went care. why they went from you know. Side story character, side story character, side story character. Oh my god, able to take on people. Side story character. Somewhere in this line, <laughs> something's not right. Does anyone see the reason this is not right? One of these things, things is not, not like, like the, the other. other. One of these things is not like the other. I mean, other. you're trying to tell me that with this kind of unlimited power and everything like that, 17 couldn't have gone out, or 18 couldn't have gone out and helped fight against Majin Buu? Or they could, they just didn't care. Or they just didn't know. In fact, could just could, could just well, maybe not it was known. something that was locked away in their system. Well, once again, the problem is that it's never explained. Well, eight, 18... Oh, no, who was it? Well, since they're androids, 17, was 17 explains to Goku that he always had unlimited energy. It was uncapped. Yeah. Maybe... And that's a, why Goku decides to fight him. Well, maybe there was a program that was blocking him from knowing that. Well, the thing is that his terminology was, I've always known that. Oh, jeez. Well, that broke that. Theory. Right, which is... Well, it's not the first time Dragon Ball Logic has broken Dragon Ball Logic. Yeah. Yeah. 
Vegeta's, Vegeta's uncontrollable dark heart should have been destroyed by the spirit bomb. Well, actually, it was his innocence as a child that kept him alive. Yep. What do you mean his innocence? He wipes out planets like they're breakfast buffets to me. Yeah. As a child. As a child he was good? And then what? He became Satan? And, oh, no, it's, it's okay. The spirit bomb don't kill him. But what about Frieza? Oh, we see, there was a time where Frieza and Cooler were friends and they were no. good. No! no! No, that doesn't work! It doesn't work! Uh, at least, uh, okay, in Vegeta's case, I can understand because Frieza, Frieza basically molded him to be an evil guy. And there, there's, there's more like, solid ground to say he could have been a good person before Frieza molded him to be that way. But he was an evil ass dick in the in the <laughs> same More saga. Evil than how many how and many just pounds? As of, evil, honestly. How many pounds of evil do you need before you can lose the good? You know, yeah, honestly. And and then they're like, well, retroactively, the reason it didn't work on Frieza is because Frieza believed himself to be good. No. No. What? No. Wait, wait, wait what? What? You could have just said that Frieza was just so unbelievably fucking strong that he just tanked the thing. Yeah, but no, no, no. They're like, oh, well, he believed himself to be doing good, so in his heart he was good. <laughs> no! No! Evil fucked hard! Evil! And he said, evil! he doesn't even know how the spirit bomb works. Right! He doesn't even know how it works. How can he just know, oh, if I be, pretend to be good, I would be, be able to block this. No! <laughs> Just stop it. Right, right. Once again, just insulting the spirit bomb. We're sorry, Kyle. Uh, we're sorry, uh, King Kai. Your Kaioken was about the only thing worth teaching anybody. And it's not even called the Kaioken. It's Kaioken. And you only... It's in his fucking name. And you only taught it to one person. Technically three. But they just... Well, technically two. Because Tien actually was able to use it in like one filler episode. Oh, in a filler episode. Yeah. But that doesn't even count. Goku. Tien. Wait, 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 what? No, wait, no. Goku! Tien, no, wait, wait. Chaozu, wait, hold on, something's not right here. Yamcha! Piccolo! Krillin, no. <laughs> he, wait, wait, hang on. Only Goku uses the thing! I know, I'm saying is though, he isn't the only one who act, like, actually used it in the series. Did, 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 oh, it oh, might oh, as well oh, have been oh, the oh, only oh, one oh, to use it actively in the series. Where's this damn thing? What, what, once again, what you have, you, you have Tien. Standing above second form cell, needing to do something to stop him. No, he, use, he uses Neo Tri Beam rather than going Kaioken times 10 Neo Tri Beam. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, <laughs> King Kai never fit, like, never like actively taught them because it, he didn't teach them shit. <laughs> they were just there to exercise. Honestly, they, they could never catch Babos. <laughs> you know, Piccolo meditated the whole time and he got to live, you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. Uh, who's uh, who's next? Speaking Stop. of Piccolo, close beam. Oh yes, yes. Oh. His most mental attack. <laughs> Metro attack. It's actually called the mystical transformation technique, and what it is is basically says, "Hey, full metal alchemist, fuck you." <laughs> By the way, I would use it properly. Properly, I would be the cheapest motherfucker with that technique. I'd be fighting against Vegeta and just like close beam and turn his clothes into like. Doesn't see the smile. Goku's gi. <laughs> just transform into Goku's gi and just have him look down like. Ah! <laughs> oh jeez. How could oh, you geez. done this to me? <laughs> oh jeez. Tra transform him. Transform his clothes to look like he's wearing Frieza's suit. Ah ha! And wait. For I didn't hear you say clothes. anything about it. Ah! I had to wait, mention. Wait a minute. Frieza's always so much it. about it and how awesome it was yesterday. It is. It is so awesome. Remember, he took a tail and a towel, turned into full-blown weighted clothing, yep. boots, a belt, a vest, pants, underwear and socks, and a sword with a scabbard. Remember, he used a tail and a cloth and made metal. <laughs> yes. And then I can't remember who it was. It was either it was either it was either uh, can, King Piccolo. Sword with it or something. Oh, I don't know. It was either King Piccolo. Or it was Slug, but one of them used it on nothing to create a throne. I would assume it would be, I would just create a whole new world and live on it by I would myself. assume it would be Slug, honestly, because King Piccolo was never really able to make a, like, be able to have a throne because he was always either locked away in a jar or he was on a friggin' blimp. True. So, true. I, so it probably was Slug, because I think he was trying to occupy, um, was he trying to occupy Earth in the movie and, like... I'm assuming that's when he did it. I think so. All I know is this technique has a million and one uses. It's used three times. 
wasn't even Mr. Popo he knows how to use it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's it's not like it's a hard technique. It doesn't use almost any energy, but you can use it. I could probably use it to turn clothes into a wedgie on somebody. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You just imagine fighting against Android Super 17 and just like, <gasps> boom! And suddenly he's got a wedgie. Like a full atomic wedgie over the head. <laughs> or just... how about this? You freaking put a pants, pair of pants around their ankles while they're running yeah. at you. <laughs> 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 Done. Anything could have worked. Right, but I mean, that's just another example of a technique that no one really uses. You freaking throw. Well, you can't use the OP move because the everything would be over in one episode. It'd be uh. over in one episode instead of three episodes to do one move, not mentioning any names. Goku. Just three episodes? Oh wait, yeah, you're right. It was more than three episodes. Don't get don't get this thing wrong. Remember that Namek was going to explode in five minutes, and thirty episodes later, they had two minutes left. <laughs> do you even own a watch? Nope. Hey, and their excuse was listen. Real time, real time is different from Dragon Ball time. Listen, <laughs> listen here, okay? I just lost track of time, wanting to destroy the world. And if Freezer was so upset about it, why didn't he just throw a second one? <laughs> I missed. Hang on. <laughs> I got it that time. Cause at least, at least in that case, Goku would have been prepared, I guess. Like, cause Goku was like. Being a kind of a, a smug dick that was like, I'm gonna kill you slowly, and then he's like, Die! This, this planet's gonna blow up in five minutes, and I gotta kill you in four. Yeah, simple as that. Um, and he did. Yes, almost. he did. He did. Almost. Um, he was so close. It's so far. Uh, uh, the bind wave from knees from uh, movie five, Cooler's Revenge. Ne oh, yeah, Knees yeah. was this brown frog kind of thing. I don't even call it. He's like a freaking salamander. Yeah. Could pop his head in his body and pop it out. Yeah. He's a salamander. And he had an attack where he would shoot these glowy lights. Yep. And they would electrocute, paralyze, and bind you in place. Jeez. Unless, of course, unless of course you were pickling. It's like, gotcha, bitch, and just grab yeah. him and electrocute him. But, I mean... It's basically like the same thing as the lightning flash surprise <laughs> attack from Master Roshi, only... He only, uh... Knee was able to move while Roshi couldn't. Yeah. So, I mean, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Once again, though, I believe that was based on the fact that Knees wasn't as strong as the rest of the characters were. Because he pretty much got destroyed by Piccolo in one hit after that. So, I mean. Babe, he, he, he was the, the, the weird one with the freaky power. <laughs> That's really what he was. Um, <laughs> well, we have this freaky power. Who should we. Let's just give it to a side <laughs> character. Uh, another one that I really liked is the Kill Driver. Uh, Turles used this in the Tree of Might movie. Oh, God. Now, what the kill driver was, was this, like, glowing red donut. <laughs> Just gonna call it a donut. Yep. And apparently what it was, it was it was condensed key energy. It was designed specifically to take down Ozaru-affected Saiyans. Oh. It was originally designed to take down his own kind that went insane because he didn't have his tail properly. <laughs> <laughs> so he created a technique designed specifically for taking down gigantic super beasts. Because he didn't have one. No, I think he had one. I think he said. I think the movie was like it was just damaged when he was born, so he couldn't use it properly or something like that. Gotcha. So basically, he's just like, you know what? Fuck you guys. If you if I can't do it, no one can do it. <laughs> That's basically it. Yep. yep. Okay, who could forget though the friggin' kamikaze ghost attack though? Oh please, I wanted to forget about that. <laughs> oh, guess what? We're gonna bring it back. Uh, oh, Gotenks. <laughs> Gotenks in his beautiful childish imagination. Oh, uh, I'm hurting, I'm hurting. Him s literally spitting out saliva's worth of ghosts. That, that tracked you down and explode! I remember that. And have a self has a self-conscious mind. Yeah, they, they will dodge, they will weave, they will use tactics. Holy crap, and I'll just... Go get them, boys! Yeah! And hey, more than one person has used it, too. <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> no one should have used it. Although, throwing it out there, Galactic Donut. <laughs> oh boy, if you thought I liked the Kill Driver, I like the Galactic Donut too. It's the Kill Driver, but sideways. Oh yeah. Yep. And basically, he uh, was it Go Tanks that used it? I think it was Go Tanks that used it. The like where he trapped him in like a ball. And no, he he trapped him in the 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 donut. Ring. Oh yeah, 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 yeah! It's 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 him. And then it just constricted and then it explodes. Just like, yep. Okay, I gotcha. Boom! And they, it was like almost undodgeable. I think yeah, the only exactly. reason Majin Buu dodged because he split his body in half, so it went through him. Yep. 
But the explosion still caught him, but, I mean... It caught, yeah, it made him go boom, but, like, it didn't do much after that. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of that, um... What was I going to say? Oh, uh, Majin Vegeta's, like, uh... uh key rings that he did against, <laughs> against uh, Goku. By the way, he's not talking about, like, jingle jingle key rings. He's still talking about rings. No, no, no. <laughs> you know. Like, he only... Like, that's... Has that... I think that's ever been shown once. Like, actual key... I mean, before... It was only shown, like, once before that instance, what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And I don't even remember when that first instance was. I don't even remember what they called it. I, if they called it anything at all. Well, I mean, they, they do have all the techniques named. It's just they don't name them in the series. That's why the the closed beam is actually, I think it's magical materialization or something. Something like that. It doesn't actually have a name. Mm-hmm. It's just what they call it. <laughs> um, or what about the SS Deadly Bomber? Or or my TH Death Ball? Does the TH stand for Trucker Hat? Yes. <laughs> actually, if you the Team Four Star edition of that movie, <laughs> I, Chris Sabat was actually in that in that uh, movie. Was he? Was he? he was, was he Andrew Thirteen? Yeah, huh? No, he was the narrator. Oh, oh. and that's what. And that's when the green man realized that. <laughs> when you take the bull by the horns, you're going for, for a ride. ride. No, I was saying that. It's, that's, and that's when the prince realized <laughs> that when you grab a bull by the horns, you're going for a ride. The thing about the SS Deadly Bomber, and it wasn't brought up a lot because it's only ever been used once. <laughs> um, in well, sorry, in one movie by one character, he used it a few times. But the SS Deadly Bomber is basically a condensed. Death Ball technique from Frieza. Yep. Uh, it's got an orb around it. In the middle of it's the condensed Death Ball. It's a gigantic homing attack that supposedly, according to the manga at least, if it hit the Earth, it would have the capability of destroying chunks of it. That's why yeah. Goku was trying his best to keep it from hitting the ground. Yeah. That's how powerful this technique was. And it was homing! Boof, 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 I win. What are you going to do? Oh man! What was the one with the fingers again? Oh the, oh spirit ball! Oh my gosh, the spirit ball! <laughs> Let's listen about the spirit ball. Yamcha, you have an original attack. Congratulations! He's got two. He's also got the Wolfgang fist. You got multiple. You much better than Goku. Or the, already. And, and the Neo Wolfgang fist. Hell, Yajirobe has one too. He has the uh, the air stutter. Oh my god. Which is actually his a named ability he has. He can't fly, but he can kick his legs fast enough that he can he can do a Yoshi. Uh, I was just about to say that too. That's what he does. He's yeah. basically like a, <laughs> He he is Yoshi. <laughs> he can't he can't glide, but he can just kick his legs really hard and keep aloft. He's Korn's Yoshi. I just realized that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. The only, Korn's Super Mario. The only thing he doesn't do is lay eggs, sadly. <laughs> Hey, you never know. Those beans. I don't want to know. Those beans could probably do oh, some real magic. Oh, jeez, I don't want to know that. <laughs> Alrighty. Anyway, get off this horrible topic. Your turn. <laughs> We're going with uh, chocolate oh. bean cannon. Are you talking about the candy beam? Yes. Of oh, candy beam used by more than one character now. Wow. More than one character has used it. In fact, not only that, but it's also canon officially that yep. the second character can do it. It was used by the Majin Buu family. Yep. And Android 21. Yeah! Why did Video Android games. 21 want to do a candy bean? Because she was part Majin. Oh, good point. She is a, and, so and just to say it, I'm sorry to say this, but she is f***ing hot! <laughs> Woo! Sorry, I used to think 18 was the babe of the group, but no, 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 no. Damn! And, and I'm, I'm talking even before she becomes the Majin form. Like, good, no, just good. Just good in general. She's... Don't, don't even, not even evil, just plain good, good Majin Android 21. Oh! It's amazing what she can do with that tail. Anyway! That voice actor, though, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It's like when I hear, when I hear, when I hear Vin Diesel, I'm like, I'm so confused right now. Yep. I'm having such conflicting thoughts. Hey, hey. Right, you're, you're, the, you're up next. You're oh, up. Wait, 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 hang on. The spirit ball thing. Yeah, the, the candy beam's best ability, though, is there's very few ways to defend against it. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. If it hits you, you're screwed. Hey, if you eat the people you turn into candy, do you absorb their power? That's yes. what Majin Buu does. <laughs> yep, I would definitely want that. Uh, the problem with it, though, is that it can be dodged easily. Yes. And it leaves you open for attacks. Because you kind of got to hold yourself in position when oh, firing it. There's so, actually only one person that's been able to, like, 
actively counter the, the candy beam, and that was Vegito. Vegito, yeah, and that's because even after Vegito transformed, he's like, Vegito was so insanely strong <laughs> that he, as a candy, as a candy, he whooped Majin Buu's ass. <laughs> Vegito, sounds and, that, like and we're talking about Vegito. Majin Buu that was able to rip a, the fucking universe apart. Yeah, yeah, you turn it, turn me into a candy, will you? It's time for you to get sucker punched. Yeah, <laughs> sweet release, <laughs> sugar rush. Yeah. He's yeah. like, I hate, I don't want you to be candy anymore. He's able to transform him back. Yeah, like, I don't think you should be candy anymore. <laughs> no, no, that, 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 we're, talking, we're not talking about Fapu here. We're talking I know, about, I'm still saying, like, in his mind, he's like, probably shouldn't have done that. I just got my ass kicked by a jawbreaker. <laughs> <Honestly>. <laughs> of all the things I've had my ass kicked by in the past, a it, jawbreaker. A chocolate jawbreaker at that. Yeah, a chocolate jawbreaker. <laughs> Damn. Um... One hell of a way to get beat up. Let's go. Let's go with another movie, shall we? Let's go with the twelfth movie in the series. Oh God! Which would, uh, if I remember correctly, was something about like the Hell Zone or something like that. I can't remember the name. Oh, was. the Dead Zone. No, this is the one had uh, Janambi in it. Oh, Janemba. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Which one of that one was? Uh, I know. I know what you're talking. About. I still remember the name of it. But he had this a technique that was called Illusion Smash, which basically he could create little portals. And just beat the crap out of you from where he was standing by punching through portals yep. and having the portals appear next to you. Yeah. And it was literally like there was really hard for you to ever actually be able to, to defend against. Because he could literally just, he could give you a wedgie from across the planet. Yeah, yeah, just, he could. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's only been shown like once after that, and that was in, a, in, a, in the manga. For the, the manga for the Dragon Ball Super actually showed that when uh, Merge Zamasu did it too. Yep, yep. Same same technique of the illusion smash. It's just basically like I play with portals. <laughs> oh, and actually shown in the anime too with uh, Aniraza too. But that's in Torment Power. You you haven't watched that yeah. part. That that actually happened too. He's able to punch through dimensions. And, and speaking about techniques um, that are only in movies, the thirteenth movie, of course, with the guy with his own version of the Orcarine of Time. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, Herudegarnd has two abilities I think are unbelievably powerful. The first is the Genma Flame. Yes! This is basically a flamethrower breath attack that was strong enough to literally KO Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta. That was fantastic. It just, it's just blah, and just everything's destroyed everywhere. Yep. And there's like no charge up for it either. He can just do it. <laughs> and the other one, I don't remember what they called it. It was like, like the Heat Illusion or something, but basically, unless... Uh, uh, Herodogar was literally using a key attack. You just couldn't hurt him. Huh. He literally was like a steam. You would just go pass right through him. Yeah. Even though he's this gigantic fucking yep. skyscraper-sized monster, he could only be hurt by key attacks or when he was attacking. It's ridiculous. And, and the only way you could really do it, like, again, to attack is if you basically made him bad. Right. If you made him bad, he was going to come, come after you. And that's what happened with Vegeta, and he got KO'd with one hit. Yep. And that's how Go Super Saiyan 3 Goku could be. He basically tanked punches until, like, yeah. he got mad enough where he found an opening. Yep, yep. And then used that one technique that he never uses in the actual series, but uses in the movies all the time. Except for that one instance in <clears throat> Dragon Ball. Well, yeah. The Super Dragon Punch! Or Dragon Fist. Or Dragon Fist. Or Penetrate. <laughs> it's at, in the, oh, he, in he the Japanese, it's actually called the Penetrate technique. He penetrated that piccolo all right. Yes, he did. Um... But, I mean, once again, that's just one of those things like, hey, here's a technique that's ungodly powerful. Yep. Let's, uh, let's just, let's, let's, let's save it for special occasions. Spe speaking of which, okay, so how about Piccolo Jr., when he got, frig he got a friggin' key blast from, from Cell oh, right through the damn chest and was able to regenerate it, how come King Piccolo wasn't able to? I don't know. He literally was <laughs> like... And that was a bigger hole than what Cell did, too. But literally, Goku passed through him. Yes, and instead of actually healing it, he just went, I'm going to spit out an egg and, like, ex explode in, like, the uh, RoboCop style. No, that, that, that's that's because they just needed an excuse to get rid of King Piccolo. Honestly. He was already too powerful by that time yeah, period. Yeah, no question. Especially, when, like, when using his full power, it quote-unquote shortened his life. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Nick, you want to throw another one out there? Uh, I'm gonna go with a Gatlick gun. A Gatlick gun. Oh, god! The poor man's Kamehameha. Honestly, yeah. though. But at least, at least, it's a signature move. It is. That he invented. Yes. Yes. Now, Goku, 
that's on par with just the Kamehameha. Just watching you, Goku. Just saying it. And it is on par with the Kamehameha. Uh, yeah, according according to how it's put, it's a faster and it's its impact is more powerful than the Kamehameha. Yeah. But it doesn't have the same staying power. Yeah. So in a, in a in a push to power kind of deal, the Gal Gun ain't gonna win. But Sorry. the Gal Gun's a lot faster coming out than the Kamehameha. Yeah. And Goku got l real lucky because, like, if I'm not mistaken, the Galgun traveled farther before Goku's Kamehameha hit. Yeah. So, like, and that was when G Goku was in Kaioth Kent times three. Right. So, like, that thing was legit. Right, it would have hit him and it would have done a lot of damage. Real quick. How about you, Beardy? Mr. I look like I'm falling asleep. And can't think of anything. We're all staring at you. I'm just letting you know. I don't like this. <laughs> um... What was that one? What was the big finishing move that they used on the Cybermon? The Cybermon? Oh, Krillin? You mean Krillin's? Yeah. Oh, what was it called? Oh, it was the one where, like... The, sc the Scatter Kamehameha. Was that Kamehameha? It was yellow. <laughs> oh, sorry, the Scatter Key Blast. Yeah. Yeah. He just... It basically was just like... And... Booga, booga, booga! And there's, like, blasts everywhere. But it yeah. was really powerful, it really. Was. It killed, what, four Cybermen? Either that one... And missed one. That one, or, well, that's because he was able to dodge. one where basically it was multiple soul orbs, and you were able to control all of them and be able to have them all go in different directions and everything, and still hit the right spot. Mm. That must be a technique from some other part of the series. I don't remember that one. It might have been in my dream. It might have been in my dream. <laughs> well, you want to know one, one that's a lot like that? I love that's once again only ever used once and used by my favorite character from the series, Piccolo. I didn't know you were that way. Oh. How about the Hell Zone grenade? Oh, baby. So, here you go. I'm going to create a bunch of really powerful explosive key blasts and just launch them like a madman into the air. And then when you think I've missed you with all of them, I'm going to close them around you. They're going to home in on your ass and explode everywhere. And the only reason 17 survived the hit is because he created the force field. Yep. Though he did, was able to use it again and, and do it successfully. And that was in Dragon Ball Super. Well... Successfully is a uh, no. It's a, like you knock turn? someone out. Well, yeah, I know, but I mean, successfully is kind of a, a mock term in Super. What? Let's face facts. In less than two hundred episodes, there's been three brand new forms of Super Saiyan. To be fair, though, that's, that is like <laughs> around this around par what with how it, other like other anim, other Dragon Ball series was. They didn't need to do it anymore. Super Saiyan God was supposed to be. We have divine key. This is the purest form. This is the strongest form. Oh, wait. Let's make Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan form. Now, this is truly... Now, we're going to make Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan instinct form. Because this is truly the... And they've already announced there's another form. Well, they mastered it. They mastered... Okay, so... No, no. I mean, they've announced that there's another form above that. No. What are you... <laughs> what you... What you... Okay, so... The Super Saiyan God. You're right. Super Saiyan Blue. You're right. Then there's Ultra Instinct Omen, which is basically the precursor... To Ultra Instinct, Mastered Form. Yes, but there's one after Mastered Form. No, that's it. No, they've already announced it with the, uh... Is it UF? UF? They're talking about bringing out the, uh... Alternate, uh, alternate Era series. Huh. Yeah, that's where they're going to bring out, like... The what-if questions people asked. Well, that's the what-ifs, though, like... Yeah, but they're still going to make a full series out of it. So it's going to be... Canon. Which means there's also going to be new forms. Which they've already announced there's going to be more forms. Including Brawly mastering his Berserk form. Mega Super Saiyan. Ah, <laughs> uh, Dragon Ball Heroes, what have you done? It's just, it's just, it's just another thing. Like, uh, it's, it's Dragon Ball Heroes. They it's, could it's have just stopped at GT and called it a day. I mean, they did for seven, for like... Yeah, they did, man. For like, like what, and ten then, years? And then Frieza had to have a new form, so yeah. that means Goku had to have a new form to fight that. And no, yet, you gotta admit, though, Frieza's form was honestly more bad, is more bad than almost all the Super Saiyan forms. I don't know about you. Hey, my new form is... Shh, shh, I'm gold! But you gotta admit, though, like, the, just the whole... No. The whole no. thing no. with it. The whole thing with <laughs> no. it was honestly pretty cool. It's been done before, only it was silver the last time, and it was his fucking brother. <laughs> but it's fucking gold, though. It. Yes, gold, one it's of the easiest... Body, that's it. Gold, one of the easiest malleable forms of metal on the planet. So is gold for Super Saiyan, though. Well, technically, they're yellow. <laughs> they ain't changing metal. Don't be technical with me, damn it. Hey, listen, all I'm saying is, how many more transformations do we need? 
For instance, I found out... Apparently everyone needs all of them. I found out that Slug is actually another transformation of Namekians. He's a super Namek. <laughs> and, and he got that ability by absorbing other Namekians until he reached a certain point where so he became a super Namekian, yes. Cannibalism for the win! That's actually, that's actually what happens when Namekians absorb too many Namekians. <laughs> Oh, God. That's super Namekian form. Oh, God. So if he would have doubled but, the amount, he would have been even stronger. Well, the, the problem is that like at, it reaches a point where you can't absorb them anymore. Like It reaches a point where so your body just eats them and it doesn't gain any more power. Can you absorb other things and get their power? No, it's, no, only, no, it's only Namekians. <laughs> it's only a technique that can be used between Namekians. Well, but like, what's, what's really <laughs> funny is that Piccolo... Junior actually displayed that kind of thing before Slug, and he didn't absorb anyone. Well, he just did it. Yeah, <laughs> that's what's really funny about this. Oh yeah, I mean, he got that skill. It's 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 he, it's, literally, he literally just went bigger, and it's like, oh shit, nothing's working. Bigger. Oh, well, you want to hear about this? Here you go. Super Saiyan God form can only be performed by having a group of Saiyans give you their power. I'm Vegeta, bitch. I don't need that. Unless you're, like, <laughs> in the most dire of situations where you have no choice. No, 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 uh, no. Yeah, yeah. This, this is a specific magical ritual that has to be performed, and it's just like, I'm Vegeta, bitch! Boom! Super Saiyan Blue. How? I'm Vegeta, bitch! And then, and then they get this explanation where it's like, Vegeta just fucking trained so damn hard that oh, he was... Yeah. So, so you don't need this divine intervention from the gods to get it. You just have to I drink mean, the it, right wheat grass. I mean, to be <laughs> fair, though, it was the quick way to do it. That's for damn sure. But the way G did it, it took him six months to do, to get to that level. Six months? He trained for years in the hyperbolic time chamber. Whis is fucking magical, man. What do you expect? He I had expect a, him to have some kind of a, a, continuity. <laughs> He has a friggin' dimension in a staff that is full of god key. I That's the same thing as the room of spirit and time. I expect him to have some fucking continuity. That's what I expect. Friggin'. What would have stopped them from turning around and performing the same ceremony on Vegeta? Toriyama, man. <laughs> exactly. But then he's just like, screw it. He's Vegeta. The prince of all saints. Fuck you, king, by the way. King, because your dad's dead, you fucking moron. But his planet's dead too, so he has nothing to rule. No, it's not. You can bring it back with the Dragon Ball. He doesn't want to anymore. Because he's a piss ant. Yes, he is. But you know what? He's Vegeta. <laughs> he can do whatever the hell he wants. Hey, isn't there supposed to be some kind of prophecy where you're pure at heart to become a Super Saiyan? Pure evil, bitch. Yeah, I am pure, 100% badass. No, because he's fucking Vegeta. It's called plot convenience. Yep. And it's spelled V-E-G-E-T-A. Vegeta. <laughs> Goku's got plot armor. Vegeta has plot convenience. And Piccolo's plot dad. And Krillin is plot death. He's yeah. plot, he's plot uh, meat shield. Yeah, he's a meat shield. That's what he is. Yes. He's, he's a meat shield and to have his pelvis broken by 18 every night. <laughs> Oh, and Tien's plot is uh, plot techniques. <laughs> I just happen to have this technique that I could have used... Way long ago to win. Tayo Ken. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of getting back onto our favorite techniques, Krillin, my second favorite character of all time. I love Krillin. He's awesome. I love the fact that Krillin know. The best part is Krillin knows he's not as strong as the rest mm. of them. Like he makes. He's not like Tien. He makes no grandeur that he's a warrior capable of standing toe to toe. He's just like I'm here. I'm I'm for support and the occasional joke and. Doing something that's going to attempt to do something and really not do shite. Even though he has one of the most OP attacks ever created. Oh, really? Are you talking about the Destructo Disc? Yes, I The one am. that has used on, worked on how many people? <laughs> but have you seen the <laughs> damn capability of it if it hits? It did. It hit Cell, and Cell just turned around and went, Bitch, that's please. That's actually not canon. <laughs> Wait, in the a in the manga, it's not canon. It never happened. They just did it in the anime to display how s how strong Cell was. How many people has he taken down with the Destructo Disc? Uh, a tenth of a person. A tenth of a person. <laughs> and one mountain, two mountains. <laughs> and then you know what happened? That tenth of a person whose tail he cut off copied his technique and made it better. 
No, that's not what I'm talking about. Oh. I'm talking about Frieza. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> he didn't copy it. Yeah, yeah the did. twin purple Destructo discs. Okay, first of all, that's a different <laughs> technique altogether. Oh, sure it is. It just happens to look exactly like Krillin. It's Krillin's. fucking purple, and it homes, and it can, and it freaking can Well, kill. first of all, the reason it's purple is because purple in Asian cultures is considered evil. While yellow is considered good. That's the first thing. Second of all, it really also requires him to kind of aim it. Yeah. And you know who else kind of can aim their Destructo disc? Krillin! No, he doesn't. He just does. And 18 can do it, too! Krillin <laughs> chucks it and prays it hits. He, he, that's why he's like, fuck it, Miss Nappa. It hit a mountain. Fuck, I only caught a tail of Frieza. Fuck, I only hit a mountain again. And I'm talking about the solar flare. <laughs> And not just any solar flare. I'm talking about the solar flare times 100. He only used it twice, and it didn't do shit. Well, technically okay, the it first, did. <laughs> the first time it did shit. The second time it didn't do shit because the, fa the fighter he was going against was fucking blind. Oh, that's really useful. The thing, yeah. the thing about this technique is it's supposed to shut off not only your sight, but also your ability to sense key. Damn. That's pretty fucking wicked. Uh -huh. That's a pretty strong technique, unless, of course, you're like, you know, an android who has the ability to detect through mechanics, or you're yep. blind, so you use your senses of hearing, or, smell. or smell, or your Master Roshi, who has specially designed sunglasses to protect him from yep. the technique, or, yeah, as you can see, if used on the right person... It can work. It, Just like every technique, it can work. Except the Destructo Disc. <laughs> it works on a damn mountain. It can work on a. You know what else works on a mountain? A rock, a shovel, a pickaxe. Not Mr. Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Satan's corpse being flung out. Yeah, a lot of things. He just rose up from the dead. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm finally. I'm good. It's. Let me get some ice. It, it was it, it's some on. magnets. Because I have a lot of iron in my blood, and they must have turned on the magnets, and I tripped. <laughs> and went half a mile into a mountain, head first, fell down said mountain, stood up, brushed my shoulder off, went, bitch, and then came back. And to give an interview. To give an interview. <laughs> to the people of the world. Um, that man, honestly, he is the true hero of the earth. Let's be honest. He is the reason that Kid Boo was even defeated. That was the only reason. <laughs> Fuck Goku Spirit Bomb. It was Mr. <laughs> Satan who... F who convinced everyone oh, yeah, on that's Earth. Like that much credit. No, Come on no, 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 no. He He's... did. He's the one who told him he was the one that was fighting Boo for everyone to give him his power. Yes. And and <laughs> and also, what? even though it was trickery, and also, he fucking dodged Kid Boo's attacks, too. Right. He was able to dodge two attacks. Oh, my Albeit, <laughs> kid, good, the, good, the good Boo inside of him was like, slowing him down considerably. But like I said, that's why Mr. Satan's such a powerful character. Yeah. But still, I mean... And he gave Goku some amusement. You can't deny that. Oh, and also, he freaking, freaking Satan punched Goku too, so hard that he made him forget his... Like, pick up his tractor and flew off, too. Hey, good sir, can you give me a cup, please? <laughs> no, no. Alright, do I have permission to chug this? Not chug it, but like... Go ahead, chug it, man. I, look, man, if I do that, my tummy's gonna go explode. Oh, if his tummy's gonna hurt, go sorry about that. Uh, go get the pop rocks. That doesn't actually work. Shh, he doesn't know that. Oh, oh, I just—I I was looking through my nose, I just realized another one. Okay, so the Ginyu Force contains five technical members. There's technically six. Yeah. But the five technical mm -hmm. members, of those members, you have Berter and Jace, mm -hmm. the red and blue, the blue hurricane and the red, I want to say Comet. I think that's what that it is. I think so, too. Um, you have Raccoon, the uh, professional wrestler. Yep. Uh, you have Captain Ginyu, the body changer. And then you have Goldo. I think I'm saying it right. Goldo, yeah. Goldo, Goldo, yeah. The midget with psychic powers. <sighs> he can fucking stop time. He can literally stop time. No one ever thought of using that technique? Yeah, seriously. I mean, I think that's, I think that's only a race-specific thing. Well, even if it's race-specific, what kind of power is Goldo's race using? Time, dude. <laughs> but why are they not more of a threat? <laughs> he was. He almost fucking killed. No, me. I mean not. I mean like, like the Saiyans are strong, the Ice Demons are strong. Why are there Goldos running around kicking people's asses? Probably because Frieza blew them up and only kept Goldo. <laughs> he tends to do that a lot. Yeah. He does. Yeah. But like Goldo is so powerful, but he's always underestimated. Like stop time telekinesis he could use to paralyze you and then they can impale you with a uh, a tree branch or drop a steamroller on you or something. I mean yep, yep. something. But, once again, cool technique, used one time. 
Well, technically twice, but I consider, I consider, uh, it wasn't his name, Hit? Yeah. I consider Hit to be something completely different. It is completely different. For one thing, Goldo can literally stop time. And Hit can, like, only, he, but he, he, he can't just hide it, he just, he skips over time. Right, right, so he, he, he like, he just, like, he goes into his own pocket dimension for, like, a second, and yeah. then comes back. That's really what happens. Which is why I wanted to bring up his technique, too. Um, the time skip. Besides being a complete and total bitch to learn in Xenoverse 2. Um, <laughs> what a powerhouse move. Hey, I'm going to skip about a second's worth of combat, dodge everything you just threw at me, and then beat the living tar out of you. Yep. By the way, i got to ask you because I had a friend ask me, and I couldn't give him the correct answer. All right, what's up? Hit. Yes. Is he a member of the Frost Demon Clan? No. He looks like it, though. He looks like it, but he's okay. not. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Because I know, what is his name? Tapion? Tapion? The, the green one that looks like Piccolo? That couldn't... Uh, wait, are we talking the about... weird-looking one? From Super? Or no, no, from the, 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 the four battle... The, the Kai you, fights. Are you talking about the small guy? No, no, no. He was he was when King Kai, North Kai, South Kai, East Kai, and West Kai had their little tournament. Oh, oh okay. He was the green-skinned guy with the big lips. Oh, okay. He, oh, okay, yeah. I think his name's Tapion or something like that, but... Um, he looks like a Namekian. He ain't. No. But he looks like one. Yeah, yeah. And he has similar abilities. But he's not. But he ain't one, you know. But yeah, no, uh, no, hits hits a completely different race, okay. and he's over a thousand years old. Well, wow. yeah, I knew about that. He's the the greatest assassin of all time. Yep. Well, if you even have that the gods long to live, then of course you're gonna eventually become the greatest of something. Well, yeah, I mean, you could also be the greatest lazy guy too. And that's not like you don't want that. But hit hit was a hit was a wonderful character. I he's I, I he'll be back. He'll, oh, def he'll definitely be back. Of course he'll be back. And if not, it's a shame for them to lose. Honestly, my other question is, how much more of Super are they gonna throw out? Two episodes. That's it. They're done. They're, they're gonna be done. They're gonna be done. They're taking the hiatus until the because they're gonna they're gonna have their best animators work in the new movie that's coming out in like December. Uh, they better make it work. Honestly. Um, about the uh, the original Saiyan God. <laughs> Bardock? No. <laughs> nah. It's some ancient Saiyan that's like was able to get was able to become a Saiyan God. And it's just well, like, here's the thing. I ha okay, throwing out continuity again here, folks. Yep. Okay. So. The Saiyan race. Yes. These tall, muscular, human-looking guys with tails yep. were originally, according to Bardock, yep. little, pink, purplish, Muppet-looking creatures yeah. with healing spooge. Spooge. I can't get enough of that word. I love that. My healing spooge. Soupy poly organic unleashing gel or something like that, I think it is. Okay, so... So they they were like you know, shorter than Krillin. Yep. And that was two thousand years in the past. Yep. So in order for this to work, this legendary ancient super god, somehow he's either gonna be a Muppet, yep, a time traveler, or he fucked a human. <laughs> or, or he's gotta exist sometime after they evolved. Yep. But before the Saiyans became a threat. Yep. There's, there's this plot hole. And they have to I fill. Bet they're gonna fill that thing, I'm Just sure. Jam it full of paper. Yeah. Keep jamming it. We gotta make it work. People are gonna ask questions. Bring Why is Super Saiyan got a thing? Bring, bring Krillin over here. Just shove him in there. Ah! <laughs> bring 18. They have three kids now. Ah! It's so dark. <laughs> Speaking of strange things, did anyone know that Goku was never supposed to come back after the Cell series? Yep. Isn't that ironic that one of the worst characters. I'm sorry, Goku. Uh. Wasn't supposed to come back. It was supposed to be Gohan. Yeah, it's supposed to be Gohan's actual takeover of the job. And then they're like, you know what? We're just gonna make Gohan a complete and total worse. What? <laughs> because because people because people are bitching about Goku staying dead. They didn't want that. But, they're like, bring Goku back. I gotta quote this one line from Team Four Star. Sorry, we keep doing it. I'm sorry. Uh, Team Four Star is amazing. You can't but, deny but, that. But, and, and it's sad that that, that they might they might be done with the Dragon Ball Abridged series after Cell. Well, th that's only because they really don't want to go any further. They've yeah. gone so far. Yeah. But uh, the, th the thing that bothers me is this. Why do any of you care? We're literally just waiting around for to be brought back. Death is meaningless, and that's what it is. Isn't it? One Dragon Ball, one group of Dragon Balls wish, boom, your friends are all back. Yep. It really makes it seem like Cell had everything planned out according to the manga. Yep. After he won the fight, he was going to go find the Dragon Balls, wish everyone back that he killed or absorbed, and then he was just going to go off and find stronger fighters. Yep. He had it planned! Even he's like, their absorption and death is meaningless because we can just fucking bring them back. Yep. 
He even told Frieza, goes, every planet you've destroyed, I can bring back with one fucking wish. You're useless. That's what it is. Yep. Raditz, every, every person you've ever killed, boom, done. I bring them all back. Speaking of Raditz, though. Let's not speak about him. Oh, come on. He's the most wasted potential kid. Well, the reason I'm saying that is because according to what, the, well, it's still rumors, like I said, but in the uh, altered universe, one of the things is when Raditz comes to the planet, rather than destroying it, he's going to see how happy his brother was and end up teaming up with him. Yep. And that's what's going to start the, uh, the, 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 ch the changes, because then when Frieza comes to the planet, Goku and uh, Raditz have been training this whole time, and Vegeta's not nearly ready to see how strong they've become. And that, of course, leads to them having to go stop uh, uh, Frieza, and uh, Raditz is supposed to be the first Super Saiyan, because his blood is... More... Stronger or I'm, I'm like thinking of I'm thinking of the What If series that uh, Masako X did. With uh, what if Raditz turned good? That's why. Oh, well, that, that, this is another thing. Or uh, there's also the what if series where what if Yamcha uh, took his training more seriously? <laughs> well, the thing is that Yamcha was actually quite a powerful opponent. Yes, he was. He yeah. was a vicious monster, and if he had taken his training seriously, rather than uh, if he had what is it? If he had taken the route Tien took, yeah, would it have been different when the Saiyan showed up? And the answer is yes. Yes, definitely. Because. There's no doubt about that. Tien was the key, was key based stronger than Yamcha was. Yes. But Yamcha was physically stronger than Tien was. Yes. The two of them could have teamed up and just destroyed Nabba. Maybe not Vegeta. No, definitely. No, I wouldn't say definitely not Vegeta. But it would have been what? One Chao Su, Piccolo, Gohan, Krillin, uh, Yamcha, oh. and Tien. So it would have been six and, on one. And technically Yajirobe, but he came in late. Well, yeah. Well, seven. Well, let's say seven on one. They probably could have done some damage before Goku even showed up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, another, another what if is, what if they had gotten the wish off that Vegeta was immortal? Oof. Because then, then Frieza would have came over and knocked him to the ground. He would have stood right back up even stronger. Yeah. And then, I guess, Frieza would try to blow up the planet and then... Vegeta just couldn't do anything. Well, I mean, he could, he would, he could do, he could, he would be able to stay alive, but I don't know if he'd be able to like do anything outside of that because he would be able to move if you think about because of the vacuum of space. Well, yeah, but once again, that's the best part about the what ifs. Yeah. Now, what what if what was in the what if Mister Satan found Boo before uh, Bibby got the chance to talk to him? Huh. Then there's a theory that because of how Mister Satan was, that the whole Boo arc would have never happened. I mean, it almost never did happen, right. in all honesty. And then a fu this fucking dickhead who decided to shoot a puppy dog is like... You see, you see that, that? that's another cruel thing. It, what was with shooting a puppy? You, you gain nothing from it, you lose yeah. a bullet, bullets are expensive, fuck you guys. Yep. Um, anime, you, you, you do this trope too much. You, you, and you, you almost destroyed the fucking world because of you shot a puppy. That's... <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. So... Such a shame. Since we're, since we're about almost the one, or almost the hour and a half mark, let's bring this up by bringing up three quick questions. Okay. So we're gonna go around the room. I'll be the last one for a change. I'll be asking the questions. So, of all the techniques in the land of Dragon Ball Z, yes, which one would you want the most, and why? Gosh, which one would I want the most? I mean, what would be what would you want to be like your signature move? Like, I mean, they're already made. I know that, but I mean, like, what would be the move that you would think that? Above all else, you would want to learn, and for what reason? If everyone else has an answer before me, that's totally fine. Clothes beam. Okay, you want the clothes beam because of its capabilities. Right, I could, tr I could create a better world. Well, yes, you could. You could literally use it on a house to create a, a high-rise. You could use it on a leaf to create a freaking rainforest. I mean, it's a great ability. And because it's used by that one, that one essence that they never truly explain in Dragon Ball, magic... Yep. Uh, it, it's basically a limitless capability. Exactly. Necro. I would personally go with uh, the dual uh, destructo disc of Frieza. Uh, yeah, the the, the, uh, the death factor. disc. The the twin death discs. Yes. Or the uh, twin pepperoni pizzas. <laughs> I love Hameen uh, abilities and then having that much power into a double shot. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Nope. There's lots of them for me. I mean, there's the Demon Spiral Fist. There's the the there's the the Omega Breaker. There's all kinds of moves. But if I were to pick one, I'd have to say it's the the crowning jewel technique and the only technique to literally just just kill Goku, just one hit and kill him. 
That would be the special beam cannon. Yep. I mean, it did. Special beam cannon! Yeah, it literally just offed him. Uh, I mean, yes, cell exploding took him out, yeah. Yep. But kind of took out a planet and a god and everything with it. So, I mean, that's an example of it. He's used it, he's used it so many times, and yet, how many times has it actually worked? Hey, Chaozu's the little dude, right? Yeah, he's the little... You probably have the Chaozu power where he explodes himself. Well, nah. that's actually, believe it or not, that's not Chaozu's power. He copied that power. One of Chaozu's abilities is he can copy techniques that he sees. Yep. He copied it off of one of the Cybermen. That's why he blew himself up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he actually copied the te technique off a of Cyberman. Okay. I and changed it to that. Were you? Moa copying techniques? Yeah, because Tien supposedly was able to do it too. Hmm. But once again, it's a technique that they only ever show once or twice. Yeah. Okay, I, I think I got it, man. Okay, what, what is your number one technique? Okay, since we're just talking about magic here and we didn't talk about any of this at all, Bobbity or Bibbity's magic in general? Well... Okay, specifically the ability to control people. Well, control people with what in their hearts? With evil. There you go. See, there's the there's the key term. But even still, though, like just just the well, fact then that you can't do it to half the people. <laughs> well, no, well, it, well in, on this planet he could. Oh. <laughs> on this planet he could control almost every person. Yeah, exactly. Well, if you, well, you never know them, if they go well, by Dragon Ball Z uh, or. Freaking Dragon Ball. If you have enough corrupt people hey. together, you can corrupt others and then just take it over Well, he also way. has the ability to brand people and make them yeah. evil anyway, so yeah. I mean... Yeah. I mean, his yeah. magic alone... Once again, the problem with the whole magic thing in Dragon Ball is that it's limitless. There's there's, yeah. there's nothing to stop it. There's no way to defend against it. Yep. Magic can literally do whatever it wants. Yep. Um, what was it? Uh, uh, King, uh, Master Roshi's sister. What's her name? Uh, oh, um, Baba. Baba. Even Fortune, Fortune Teller Baba. Even she's shown amazing power with her magic. Yep. Uh, regenerating, rebuilding. I mean, she can do that with, with just magic. Yep. It, literally, if you have magic as your special ability, you've literally given yourself every true advantage you need. Basically, the sky is the limit. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, of course, if we're going with the uh, second best, I'm definitely going with my demon, demon spiral fist. But, you know. No, 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 no. Okay, so next one. Who would you say... Is your favorite character? My favorite character Oops. would. I gotta go with you, man. I gotta go Piccolo, dude. Just, just, just his overall development as a character, really. Like he was basically he was basically brainwashed into saying, "You gotta kill Goku for for me by me by." I'm saying about his dad, King Piccolo. Right. And then once he actually killed Goku, like he didn't know what he want what he felt anymore. So, like, it just confused him. And then, like, when he was training with Gohan, it, like, it changed him into being a better person. And then it was just, He became like, Gohan's dad. Yeah. Because, let's face facts, it wasn't Goku. And, and then, like... <laughs> and, and, and then, it, when I was explaining Dragon Ball Fighters, it was, like, like, the only reason that, like, like, most of the people really, like, went with Goku was basically out of, like, out of the situation. Like, they had no choice. They had to trust in him. And it just became the norm for them that they just basically, could, like, learn to trust him. Right. And that's the, and like in my opinion, that's like more more than Vegeta. I would say that like the, his, char his character development was much is better than I think Vegeta's even. Well, I, I will I will give you almost everything you said there. Although I have to admit that if there's one character who truly made the 180, it was eventually Vegeta. Oh, I agree. I I definitely agree with that. It's I mean, Piccolo like, Piccolo still keeps himself distanced. Yeah. But let's face facts. He's he's Gohan's dad. Because he has no Facebook friends. Well, he, yeah, like. Sure he does. Pic Piccolo is always going to be like considered. If you really think about it, he's al he's always going to be considered recognized unless you're brainwashed by Mr. Satan as King Piccolo. You're always going to be considered right. That. And like, sins of the father much? Yeah, exactly. And like that's always going to stick with him. That's why he keeps his distance from society. But it's just like in terms of around the main gang that Goku's with, like he's really like did the 180 on it for sure. How about you, the back there, Frodo Baggins? Majin Damn you. <laughs> First him, then you. Boo! Uh, we can eat you. We can eat you half. We can eat you half. I would love to voice that, man. I'm telling Majin you. Majin Buu is one of the greatest characters purely because of just how fun he is. How fun he is, and yet how dangerous he is like, at the like, same time. That's what I was about to say. He is so fun, but he's like a baby elephant. Yep. You know, a baby elephant is fun, and they'll chase the ball and everything. But if it if it if it hits you, you're gonna get hit by an elephant. All right, it's, 
It's, it's, you know, it's a thousand pounds of muscle hitting you. I mean, even if it's only play fighting with you and it hits you against you're, the wall. You're going to be flung. Okay, you're going to be nailed. And that's Majin Buu. Majin Buu, in a nutshell, is just like, it's like the, 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 the kid with too much strength. <laughs> yes. How about you there, Scruffy? Everyone who doesn't expect it, the turtle. Ah, oh, Master Roshi's turtle. Yo. Gotta go with the turtle, man. Oh my god. Think about it. If they would have had him actually as one of the main characters instead of a side character that basically sat there and told everyone to calm down, he could have told all the villains to calm down and somehow <laughs> magically made them calm down. I'm the prince of all Saiyans. That's very nice. Uh, uh, uh. I, 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 I'll rule this planet! Well, then I guess I'll be one of your subjects, then. Uh, 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 I don't know. Would you like to be my friend? Yes. Yes, I'd like that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, that, he, was, he was really the only reason that Launch was able to become good again, like, every time she went bad. It's all because of him. Hey, Launch, how you doing? I'm pissed off at the world! Eat a Snickers, Launch. Why? Because you're not the same. Oh, better? Yeah. Better. <laughs> Turtle, the original Eat a yeah, Snickers. He's the original Snickers. <laughs> Gotta pick the turtle. Nope. Though. Well, you know what? I can respect that. Man. I can respect that. I gotta I got throw Piccolo out there. Yeah, no question. And, and the reason why it's so vast, not only does Piccolo contain, as you've seen, the Demon Eye Flash, the Mystical Transformation, Special Beam Cannon, Hell Zone, and Light Grenades, spoiler. Breath and Beam Attacks, and Finger Attacks. And he can grow in size. Grow in size, regeneration. Add all those up to the fact that he is not, not only is he Gohan's spiritual father. Yep. But he even takes Goten under his wing. Yep. He takes uh, Goku Jr. under his wing. He Trunks. takes Trunks under his wing. Well, Saiyan fathers weren't really that good, were they? Well, the, the, up until the end of the about the end of the Majin Buu series, no. After after the end of the Majin Buu series, then boy did Vegeta do a one eighty and become the world's greatest dad. Right. But that, up which, until that point, Vegeta Piccolo was like, "Fuck you." And then Goku is still training like a madman. Yeah. So at the at every Father's Day, Piccolo's sitting there and he's like. I have all these presents, but I have nowhere to live! <laughs> Happy birthday, son. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, in fact, he, according to uh, the 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 you know, original creator, um, Piccolo has been there for every major event in Gohan's life. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Birthdays, marriage. Yep. Her, he was there when freaking uh, uh, Pan was born. Yep. I mean, come on. This guy has been there every time. And where's Goku? I'm off training again. Or, I'm dead. Yeah, basically. Hell, even Vegeta drove his daughter to and from the mall. Yep. With the mustache. Which mustache? <laughs> <laughs> I shaved my mustache, you idiot! <laughs> so do you think I look any different? No, I shaved my mustache! <laughs> <laughs> he got so salty when that happened. Or in the manga where he was talking with Chi Chi and he was a, he, she was like, Well, if you're so so angry all the time, why are you even with Bulma? And he's like, I love her. And she's just like, What? Well, we Saiyans love strong willed women. That's just us. Like, that's what we look for in a girl. And like, Bulma, oh my goodness. You know, <laughs> there is not a woman on the planet more strong willed than her. Yeah. And he's like, She's got beauty, brain, strong will, and. She'll, she'll probably kick your ass if you're not and, ready. And Bulma's standing behind him the whole time, just yeah. blushing because he's doing all these compliments. She's like, yeah. why did you ever tell me that? He's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah, you know I hate your sneak attacks. Yeah, sneak up on me, why don't you? All right, so we've done... We've done... Yeah, you can tear that down if you want, man. We have done the greatest and our favorites. So, let's finish this up with the wrap of them all. Of all the characters you've met in the series, which one do you think is literally bottom of the barrel? Your most hated spies and useless character. Goku. Shut up, it's not your turn. Besides Goku. Oh. Goku's just number one. Are you in ready? The, in the, yep. the boss rabbit. Oh, come on. The boss rabbit. Are you talking about the rabbit on the moon? Yep. The same one that Goku literally punted to the moon. And he even sent a rabbit to the moon. You're kidding about that last one, right? No! <laughs> no, he was not. This giant, super strong bunny rabbit that Goku literally just went, Hadouken! And just launched him yep. to the fucking moon. Yep. That, the boss rabbit. That, that but th why do you hate him so much? Like, why is he the lingering one? Why, you know, the, the reason I ask this is because, you know... Okay. <laughs> For one thing, I know that there's animals that are fucking kings of the world and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But come on. Fucking rabbit. <laughs> the, the rabbit with sunglasses, he kinda of like he just seems he just seems like a kinda of like 
throw off to like one of those like Chinese um, yakuza's, uh, like those mob Chinese mob. Well, that, that's what it was there for. Yeah, like, it kind of like reminded me of that, but like in a way, it's like it just looks stupid, honestly. I, it, I, it gave me it gave me great joy to see him punt it to the moon. <laughs> if it gives me joy for that, then I will gladly say it's Bob and Barrel for sure. Just just because they're gone. True. Okay. Mr. N? Alright, well, other than Goku, I'm gonna actually choose Nails. Nail! Okay, I got no wine, Nails. Nail! Ever since I actually did see the series, I always thought Nails was too weak and unappreciate to be in the series. Nail! He was just a little version of Piccolo, and pretty much never amounted to be anything else. Even though he was stronger than Piccolo before they, they became fused. Yeah, but unfortunately he really didn't get a chance to really show off. When was yep. he shown to be stronger? Well, he was technically stronger. Well, he was technically, but he was it was never shown. It was explained, actually, when Frieza uh, read uh, Nail's full ba ba uh, battle power. It was like 38,000. And Piccolo's, at the time he died, was only like 1,000. Right. So he was stronger, but the problem is that he only had a chance to shine for like maybe a minute before... Because Frieza, because Frieza was like... Free destroyed him. That, just yeah. put it right down there. It's, yeah. it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with it, but I, I guess... Ba basically, Nail was there to show how strong Frieza was just in his first form. Yeah, Na Nails was a was a freaking punching bag. That's what yeah. he was. Yep. Okay. Though you gotta admit, though, his freaking like... Friggin' like, pa like that when on Frieza was actually pretty badass. You can't deny that. Well, I could after he was disarmed. Mm, yeah, that was pretty pretty cool though. I can't deny it. Besides Yoink. Goku. Besides Goku, I already called that. I already called that one out. Not younger years, Gohan. Dweeby weak. Oh, ad uh, adult Gohan. What, what what did he call himself? <laughs> Sayaman! I am the <laughs> great Sayaman! That's who I am. Hero despise. of justice. <laughs> and I'm Sayaman! Woman! Done. I hate you both. Fucking They're together. I know. They're, they're the same category. Yeah. <laughs> I could see that working. Just that part where they were that is what I hated the most. Well, you know what's really funny? Because instead of standing up to their parents, because they were already old enough to <laughs> think for themselves, they decided to hide behind that, and not only that, it just made them look wussy, and they acted wussy. Well, actually, the reason Gohan did it was because he still wanted to fight crime, but he didn't want people at school to recognize him. Yeah, he, because he... But Saiyaman! Hey. The Cybermons are better than that! <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> and they blew themselves up! <laughs> Woo, we're gonna, we're gonna step away from that. I can feel a lot of salt and hatred coming from you. It's strong with you. That that's some strong hatred. That's some thick uh, hatred right there. What was I gonna say? I don't know, but it better not be about the great Saiyan man, or he might rip your freaking neck out. It, it does, but like it's the reason. That, <laughs> actually, in Dragon Ball Fighters, like the reason that Gohan like came up with the great Saiyan man idea was actually like from the Ginyu Force, because how how traumatized he was when he fought Raccoon in the Ginyu Force. He was so traumatized he wanted to be. He's yeah. fucking Batman. Yeah. Ah! yeah exactly. Oh no, I hate him even more. Exactly. I'm so glad he got taken out of this freaking tournament earlier. <laughs> um. Well, okay. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go into my rant about Goku in a second, but let me talk about my most hated character of all time. All right. Besides Goku, he came from Dragon Ball Super. Yes. He came during the Frieza, the Gold Frieza saga. Yep. And he's the world's greatest galactic policeman. Oh my god. Yes. Oh, please. Jaco! Oh, please stop. <laughs> he makes me hurt. Just thinking about him, bang! <laughs> he just makes me hurt. He, he does. It's, there's <laughs> just something about him that makes me just want to reach out with both hands and hug him around his throat until he stops moving. If you're gonna shoot I, me, I, I mean, hey, that's what Bulma's for, though. It's okay. That's what okay, Bulma's for. Right. Now, the, the only character that can beat out that silver-skinned moron is Goku. But here's my reasons. I'm not going to stretch it out too far, because if I do, I could literally make my own movie out of this. Yeah. Okay, so let, let's... I'm going to start off with my th my three key points I hate about him. One, he is not a family man. Nope. Okay. He's married to a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. He's He has a beautiful son. Actually, he technically has two, three sons. Two. Well, in, throughout canon history. Throughout canon, yeah. 
Um, oh no no no! Uh, Goku Junior is not a son. He's, he, a, he's not. No, he's like a great great grandson. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, um, he's, he's got he's got two sons. Like, yeah, I'm, I get thrown away. Um, does he do anything for the house? No. Does he does he help in any way with raising Gohan? No. No. Does he do anything but train and fight? No. He, he occasionally did a farm. Oh, yeah, but, uh, but, I mean, Vegeta is this evil, re and in the end, he's still the better father. He is. I mean, face facts. I mean, if you put him against Goku, Vegeta stays at home more, cares for the kids, trains him, even takes his daughter to the mall. Mm -hmm. he, he helps with finances. He helps Bulma with stuff that he can't understand. Yeah. I mean, he's helpful. I mean, yes, even Bulma said he's not, like, he's not father of the year material. But when but you, when not. Trunks fell down, what did he do? He helped Trunks stand back up. Mm. He didn't just laugh at him and tell him to stand back up. He helped him back up. The same thing happens to Gohan. Goku would be like, that's right, Gohan. Get back up and train yourself harder. That just, I hate that. The same thing, the, I have the same problem with Peter Griffin. What a horrible father and a oh, horrible yeah. husband. Yeah. That, that's, that's where I put Goku. I put Goku at the same level as Peter Griffin. That's sad. That being that, said... That actually is a theory, though, that the reason that the gang is, like, even with Goku is the, is this whole idea of, like, they're all, like, upset, like obsess, obsessive with him, basically. Like, he has a way of making people, like, obsessed in the way that they just can't get rid of, like, can't leave him. Like, they, all, they always have to be, like, around him. Anyway. Yeah, it's, it's weird. So basically an entourage. Kind of, I guess. The second thing I hate about Goku, and this is one of my key arguments, because like I said, when I was a kid, Dragon Ball was the shite, and Goku was awesome. Goku has no, literally no, self-made techniques. None. Every technique he has, he was either taught, or just inexplicably knew. For instance, for the longest time, I was in the belief that the solar flare could only be used by shiny objects. But Goku can use it! It's never explained when he learned how to use it or when he was trained to use it. But he can use it. But it's... Actually, it was kind of explained. It, it, like, off-track-ish. People say, oh, it's because the sweat on his forehead. Wait, the, wait, the solar flare technique? Yeah, solar flare. No, the reason... No, no, the, re the reason why he <laughs> was able to learn that technique was because Tian Shin, Tian Shin Han used it against him in the 21st World Martial Arts Tournament. And that during his training with, with Kami, he, was, he taught himself how to use that technique. Well, right. Once again, though, he taught himself how to use that technique. Yeah. But he never made up a technique. Yeah, I, I, I'm just giving you the... He, uh, but, it's, but it's, the other thing is it's not explained why, because even Tien said the reason he's capable of doing it is because he reflects the light off of his bald head. Yeah. Why can Krill do it? Because he reflects it off his bald head. Cell, he had a shiny bald head. Yep. And even in his semi-perfect form, he had a jewel on his bald head. But Goku, with a full head of hair, solar flare blinds Vegeta. Because his eyes are always and glossy. Tenshihan. And Tenshihan. And Tenshihan. No, it boggles the mind. His eyes are always glossy. Don't you see it's it? It's because he's a fucking idiot. Bringing me to my third and most hated thing about him. He is a fucking idiot. <laughs> Beyond Th idiot. There is no level of how much I hate stupid people. I really do. I'm not saying I'm a genius. I'm not. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a somewhat intelligent person. But, dear Lord, there's nothing denser than a Goku. If you were to look at matter, there is nothing that could penetrate how dense Goku is. <laughs> Antimatter cannot damage the density this man has. Yep. He thought marriage was food. He didn't even try to look it up. He didn't even know how his son was born. <laughs> Chi Chi went to the hospital, came back, and he said he must have picked up, she must have picked him up at the hospital because she had a big belly. <laughs> even Vegeta understands this crap. I mean, he did fall on his head when he was a baby. <laughs> yeah, and he's also been launched through mountains, planets. But as a baby. <laughs> as a baby, with a power level stronger than his grandfather's. No, it wasn't. No, Gohan was stronger. Gohan, Grandpa Gohan was much stronger than, Go than Goku. Well, even then, he's a Saiyan. Yeah. Okay. He's, he's been smashed repeatedly through objects that are so dense. You're telling me those mountains don't have iron deposits in them? Come on, he was—he is so beaten up top. Yeah, he. I agree. He's he is. 
You go up here, and it looks like the freaking wastelands of Fallout New Vegas. Yeah, he, and it's just barren. He's, he's basically, the, he has the brain of an 80-year-old Alzheimer's. I wouldn't give him that credit. <laughs> he, has, he has the brain of a sugar-addled five-year-old. <laughs> Listen, the only thing that's in that brain is the functionality of his body parts. That is it. He lives on instinct alone. That's all he is. Yep. He is a giant tool. Point him at a problem. He fixes the problem by punching. By it. punching it or headbutting it repeatedly. You're, you're biting scared. it. Forgot biting. Biting, scratch, you know, etc. Blowing it up. But but he yes. has never shown to have anything redeemingly close to intelligence. I mean, he, he has a few tactical tricks. Okay. Well, I, I mean, he did, the he instant was, the instant transmission so Kamehameha was pretty cool. Yes. Although He's only ever used it low. twice, but I mean, and <laughs> in, in the Tournament of Power, his whole attempt at knocking out Jiren by using six, uh, six, six, um, destructo discs, like he he launched five and had a six hidden one, that it, but that was only because he saw because Krillin did it on him, and so he did it back at at Jiren, and he was like, almost got him out of the ring because of that, but. But, but but other than that, and planting landmines on top of that, well, like but, I yeah. said, stealing tactics. So did well, he really, well, or Goku is just—he's really that. just okay. To describe him, how the original creator defined him, is he is a man who has boundaries, and he has boundaries that he has to break in order to move further. Mm -hmm. And he has problems that some of us can relate to. I don't know about aliens invading and me having to become a giant monkey, but he has problems that that are relatable. But in the end, I have never in any anime seen a main character that level of stupidity. Mm -hmm. Goku is, without a doubt, the dumbest character to ever oh, walk the face that. of the anime worlds. Mm -hmm. And I know what you're saying. Well, what about like what about King Slug's henchman that, that punched a truck and stuff like that? He was designed to be an idiot. There's a difference. Goku was supposed to be some kind of hero. He turns out to be one of the dumbest characters to ever reach the planet. I'd say yeah, no move from, you know, but they were created as well. That's that's my issue with him. He's a horrible family member. He's a horrible parent. He's even a horrible friend. Yep. Let's face facts. Hey, come on, be my meat shield real quick. My favorite line. I became stronger because I watched Krillin die, and I became a Super Saiyan. Well, you did show up when you found Yamcha blown up, Tien dead, Piccolo destroyed as well. They're all your friends too. Just, just Krillin? Just just Krillin. That's it. That, that's what made you go Super Saiyan. Just Krillin. I mean, Your son was on the ground. Your son almost died. And no, no, it's just, it's just Krillin. Just Krillin. You know, even Vegeta would be like, I blew up my partner, but even I feel that fucking cold. He, 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 Are we there yet? Yes, he uses his friends. Are we there yet? He uses his friends as protection. But he, I think he just uses them as a reason to fight. Oh, there's no question. He is, he is by far a horrible character. I'm going to catch flack for this. I know I, I know there's going to be people that get to this point and they'll go, I hate you. But I'm cool with it because I don't care if you hate me. Um, don't hate these guys, but you can hate me. Um, he he has no special capabilities other than that, that which he's seen or taught himself. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's face facts. Even Gohan, his son, has his own techniques. Piccolo learned his own techniques away from his father. He's basically a clone of his father and he learns new techniques. Yep. Frieza, King Cold, Cooler, three different characters, all from the same family, have their own special techniques. Tien, Yamcha, Chaosu, all who grew up and trained with each other, have their own personal techniques. Even Chi Chi had her own personal technique. Yes, it was a little hat that she threw a, a boomerang cutter in and she had a beam in it, but that was her own technique. Goku has none. He uses what he has when he can. There's never anything exciting about him other than the fact that if he starts getting his butt kicked, they give him a new hairdo and a new colored vest, and he becomes stronger. Yep. Well, Vegeta does that too. But the difference is, Vegeta is far more likable. Oh, yeah. And has his own technique. Techniques. Yeah, it's plural. <laughs> yeah. There's nobody else running that big bang attack or final flash. Although, I swear I saw Trunks use the... Yeah. Uh, to, uh, the final flash, he but, he, but I don't think he ever called it final flash. He did. He did? Yes. Okay, so even his son copied from. That's okay because his son is trunks. It's okay. It's he's much, much more likable. He's, he's he's even more likable. But uh, yeah. So sorry to bring it out on such a dour note, but uh, uh just look up pictures of Android Twenty One. I'm sure there's plenty of porn drawn up of her already. Oh, but anyway, hold on. Before uh -oh. we forget, 
Why is this happening? This is, ah. this, this is what happens when you have a shorter friend who you upset while cutting your hair. Oh, oh. oh you, you, you made her angry while she was cutting your hair. I, I always make Reaper angry. You don't do it while you're cutting hair. Reaper's just naturally hateful towards me. And the best part is, she'll never watch the video. She doesn't hear any of that. <laughs> she doesn't. She, no, I should watch. She's going to watch this one because she's like, you know what? I want to see what they're out to. And no, 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 no. Because it to her in the videos and she don't watch them. Well, the, the other thing to say is the fact that she won't watch just simply because it's about Dragon Ball Z, which is something she's not interested in. So, folks... With that little bit of uh, Dragon Ball fun, uh, next week we'll bring, be bringing back our uh, Fallout review, our Fallout character designs, where we'll be bringing out Fallout New Vegas. Also, sometime next week, uh, or rather this week, um, Reaper Rose will be stopping by. Hopefully Sub can stop by. I'm not sure what day it's going to be yet. But we're going to be continuing our, also our Harry Potter series. And we'll see just what happens when you put a bunch of idiots together to fight against Voldemort. But until next time, folks, I'm Kaiju K. Neck or neck. It's a Quack. Redfield. And we'll see you all in the future, everyone. Peace out, everybody. Later. You know what the best part is? Right, we can all we all now know that he was looking at his cell phone. Because when he said quack, I could see his cell phone ah. in his glasses. Oh, no. That's, that's actually the screen. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, that's the screen. Oh, you shouldn't, you should, you're not a space duck. Peace out, everybody. <laughs>